Let's go! Who's up next? Welcome, Internet, to the Xbox Empire podcast, part of the Play Some Video Games network of podcasts. That's right. You got to do the head thing. I'm Elaine. Donnie's here. We're joined by Nathan this week, too. Amber, <laughs> guess who's back? What's up, Nate? Hello. Guess who's back to Good start evening, trouble. Good evening, everybody. I'm, I'm only here to start fires, trouble, and be like in a void. So... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if, if anyone's listening to the audio version of this, he's literally made his entire background black and it's freaking me out, man. Well, he's wearing a black blazer of all things, too. It's just like a floating head. There's a lot <laughs> happening and my brain is struggling to, to process it all. But we're here and we are podcasting on a Sunday. Donnie, why don't you tell the nice people while we're recording this at a different time than usual? Yeah, we are gaming for guru. Hashtag gaming for guru. We are raising money to support our good friend, Bobby Pauls, who's been in the ICU and in a coma for COVID related issues since Halloween. He's missed all kinds of stuff, man. He missed Christmas, he missed the elections, he missed all kinds of all these releases. Age of Calamity. If you knew Bobby, you know that's going to He's gonna be like, well, there's a Zelda game that released. It's going to bother him a lot. Um, so we are trying to raise money and helping him with what undoubtedly will be a long recuperation and a lot of medical bills. And mm -hmm. I am not like real happy about that. We've been streaming all day long. We are here to close it out. We have raised to this point $18,415. Oh, baby. When we started this morning, it was at like just over 16000 Yeah. Today has been a big day for the cause. And I'm it's very... Fun. Very excited. Thank you, Anthony Wambach, who just donated $50. So here's the deal. Let's go. If you're hearing this on the podcast feed and you're not watching us live, there's still time to donate. You can donate. We're taking donations until the 26th, I think. And for every $10 that you put in, you earn an entry into the raffle. So if you put in $50, like Anthony just did, you get five entries. We're giving away an Xbox Series S. We're giving away six months of Game Pass. We're giving away a Nintendo Switch, uh, PDP gaming accessories. We've got game codes for days. We have all kinds of stuff. Um, we're going to have a lot of prizes. I think at least like 100. It's not like five prizes and you're like in here, like, you know, you're hoping your ticket's one of the lucky five. We're going to have a lot of, lot of giveaways. So uh, $10. For those of you in the chat, I still see you with us. You watch us live right now. You can donate right now. You can put your name in the raffle. Um, when we started this morning at 16000 I was like, It'd be really amazing if we could hit 17. And then we got to 17 and started creeping up slowly. And then Rebecca, man, just crushed it as she always does, our internet it's superstar. True. And true. it went over 18, and I'm like blown away. And I'm like, that's amazing. And here I am sitting here two hours away from, I think we're the final stream on today. I, I don't yep. remember the schedule, but I was like, man, if it could go to 19, wow. Let's go, kids. Because I know Rebecca's donating all of the funds from her stream today. So like we have a lot more that's coming that just hasn't been donated yet. I mean, there's a chance that if we could if we could get to 19 before the donations in, there's a chance it could be at 20. But it's all said and done like when everything's consolidated and closed out and that would be incredible. So, that's what we're it's doing. It's a lovely collection of communities and they're wonderful people. That's yeah. really what it is. Yeah. It's not just our community, it's a bunch of other communities. 10 as well. podcasts, all of Quest for Pixels, Mega Dads, Joe After Work, Kato Potato, yep. um Holly Crossing, Lizabelle, just all kinds of people. I mean, obviously, Sean and the Xbox Drive. Yeah, I mean, all, just everybody. Like, it's kind of our little be. community corner. All of us little podcasters that could. We kind of did banded together. We pulled an Avengers, if you want to. We did, them. except we're like, maybe we've got some cardboard boxes in place of some or the armor, but we're here for it. Okay. That's true. All the way. That Look, works. All right. It's like we when South Park played the Avengers. <laughs> That's we what don't we're have doing. the shiny armor, okay? Look, yeah. right? It's not official. It's like off-brand. Like you know when you go to the Halloween store and it's, it's like, like hockey video pads. Game yeah, but but we're very enthusiastic. But we make up for uh, the shiny armor with our enthusiasm. Eighteen five sixty-five. 
It's obviously paying off. Ooh, there we go. Right, let's Still go, going. Still going. Still going. Suit up chat. Five sixty five. <laughs> We're less than five hundred dollars away from nineteen thousand dollars. Let's go. That's crazy. That's so That's much crazy. Money and it could like be you. If you're listening to this, it could be you. It could be the, the difference that puts us over the edge. I'm gonna read this uh chat message because it made me laugh. Off brand Avengers just like the Avengers game. <laughs> <laughs> just I had that's good. I, like it's woo! true. Oh that's Sean, good. thank you so much for the chat. Sean says merch too. That's right. Yep. We have merch. You can buy a gaming for guru t shirt. All the proceeds for that goes into the pot too. So like I said, the pot that you see is bigger than what it is now. And who knows what it's going to tell when all the T's and all the when all the T's are crossed and all the I's are dotted. I like to dot my T's and cross my I's though. Whatever. Very important question. Uh-uh. Is the pot bigger than Elaine's coffee cup? Nothing is bigger than my coffee That's cup. That's true. It's <laughs> It's never ending. You having your drink reminds me I need to fill my rum. Yeah. <laughs> you having your drink means, reminds me I need to drink things. Uh, mm-hmm. Hydrate, right. y'all. Oh, you're drinking water like a grown up. It's after seven. I can't drink calories. That's what the you're bourbon's for, right? You're so pretty. <laughs> 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 all right. There's news to talk about now that we've discussed all of this. Look, I drink a lot of water. I should be clear. I just, I can't uh, roll past an opportunity to tease Nathan. It's too fun. Yes. Awesome. In his coffin. <laughs> right now all right we gotta there's, there's no way to start the news other than to talk about this lucas films game situation uh so i let's let's talk about bethesda first because i wanna okay because i wanna so here's the deal machine games and bethesda put out a tiny little trailer of a video game on twitter and we're and everywhere on the internet this week this week it's yeah. been a long week. It mm-hmm. could have been 12 years ago, and I would not know. And uh, they're panning over a bunch of stuff. And it turns out it's an Indiana Jones property game. And I was not expecting that. It still fits. It's still Nazi murder. So I'm still here for it. Like, it, I, there's no information other than it's, you know, Machine Games, the makers of all the Wolfenstein. And it's Indiana Jones. It's going to take don't... place in, like, Italy? Like, sure. in the 40s or 50s, right? Rome in the 30s, late 30s. Where okay. were the? What was the timing? Where does that put it in the movie timeline? It's in been between a long time. Raiders and Last Crusade. Okay, I mm-hmm. needed that. I don't. I didn't do my proper research before the podcast. Resident Lucasfilm. Good. I'm glad here. you're here because I'm flying completely <laughs> by the seat of my pants on this one. Uh, in terms of that, when I say of Italy, and he goes Rome. Rome. <laughs> actually, Rome. Mm, actually, I consulted the ghosts in my coffin, and they said. Because <laughs> in the trailer, right? It's like the Vatican. Skeleton Five over here says. Yeah, I, you might he might be in an, <laughs> a tomb right now. We don't know. Uh, I'm really excited about this. I have not hated anything that Machine Games has done. So, like, let's do Indiana Jones. Like, let's first person Indiana Jones it. That's what I would like. I don't know. What about you guys? Are you where do you Go, land? Nathan. So first person, I wouldn't no. like to see that. I'd like to see what Respawn did. So Respawn was a traditional first person developer, right? And then they did the Jedi Fallen Order game, which was a third-person fantastic game, I'd love to see Machine Games expand their horizons a little bit and get into that genre, too, and focus on what makes Indiana Jones Indiana Jones, right? So you're you're in the past. There's no modern technology or anything, so you're focusing on that. You're focusing on the whip mechanics. You're focusing on the, you know, the World War II, you know, World War I type aesthetic. I think that they could do a really good job with that. And if you, if you make it a third-person adventure game, that's where I think a lot of people go. I mean, honestly, the last Indiana Jones game that came out was a third-person adventure game. I think it was on the Wii. Yeah, uh, I don't, uh, yes, if we're not counting any of the Lego property stuff. Um, yeah. Look, here's my thing about that, though. We've done a lot of games. Like, that comes up against some stiff competition, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you're coming up against Uncharted. You're coming up against Tomb Raider, which, while different, have done this, kind of. Last in, Jedi in, game. In, in a very, like, modern sense. Mm-hmm. So I almost... That's why I'm... My head says, give me a first person one. At least it will feel different than it's gonna be shoving f- it into this battle. First person shooter whip mechanics? Yeah. Let me freaking. <laughs> wow. Yeah, sure. Was that Bullet they, Storm that did something like that? Yeah, yeah kind of. So yeah, that, like that. yeah, that's not. Um, it's, it's very doable. Or it doesn't have to be a shooter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't well, have to be. I don't like that. Be. Just make it the way that out of Indiana game. Jones. The first thing that I thought of. All right. So I got a couple of things. First thing, I'm not a huge Indiana Jones movie fan. 
Da, 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 da. Yeah. yeah, Nathan's going to cry in his stomach. <laughs> the second thing. I, uh, I like Indiana Jones a great deal, although I'm not like a super fan. The I, I first somewhere thing I between. thought of when I first saw this was I thought it was an announcement. And I was like, they're not going to make Wolf 3 for this? And I was mad. But There's then no as way. I read about it, this is a game is a long way away. And I yes. think they are making Wolf 3. So I think we're going to get Wolf 3 first. I don't like I... the idea of machine games not doing shooter game because that's why I love machine games. But... They're a great dev. Maybe they totally can. I just would hate. I don't want to say hate. That's not the right word because I might like it. Because here's the thing. While I may not be a huge fan of Indiana Jones, I love Uncharted and, and Tomb Raider and those games. Sure. So while I may not be a fan of the movies, I may love the game. Right. So I'm, I'm not ruling that out. Um, but there is a part of me that's like the, they make a third person action adventure game. That's great. And then that, that's what they do for the next decade. And it's like, Mate. I don't know about that. I, they have a lot of resources, and they've, <clears throat> with the exception of one of their titles that I did not particularly love, have put together a lot of goodwill, right? So they could do both. They could grow and end up doing both, and people would probably be very happy to see that. They could do more third person if they decide to go that way for Indiana Jones. They could do more of that if it was successful and still give you Nazi shooting Wolfenstein. Because it's so funny because when they were acquired, we were like, man, if Machine Games made like a Gears game or if they did like a Doom game. Like, and now it's like we're doing an Indiana Jones game. It's like, oh. I think this fits better in their wheelhouse than them touching either of those two franchises personally like i don't need you to touch doom it's fine oh of course it is <laughs> you know what i mean but we, you like, know we were good. talking about what could be right sure right and this I, is a far cry from that it's still nazi murder yeah but it's, it's a completely different in, game look, yes but that doesn't matter <laughs> they're still ready to fight as long as it's everybody. nazis as long as it's nazis and you can murder them <laughs> so i mean i have very few wants when it comes to this situation uh, i do agree with you i think we're going to get wolf 3 first because there's no way not already in the works yeah. with the gears churn. I think it's next year. Or this uh, year. You think it's next year? I think it's this, this year. year. I think it's next fall. Really? I do. When would they announce it? The summer? Yeah. Okay. Look, I want more Wolfenstein. I want you to be I mean, right. unless, I want to argue I've, with you. Unless it's just been pushed off, you know, because of COVID and everything. But that's which which everything that's coming out, I'm just I'm just assuming it's getting delayed. But yeah, that's if I had look. to bet if we were doing like a fantasy league or anything. Yeah, I think I think Wolfenstein 3 is coming out, and I think it's coming out this year. That would be lovely. I would love to play more Wolfenstein this year. I'd love to play a lot of things this year. I also don't have any time to play all these video games, so yeah. I don't know. I'm conflicted, right? Yeah. Um, all right, so let's... I suppose we can talk about Jedi Fallen Order here because we... You know, Nathan Wait a minute, we didn't up. talk about the... the oh, most... you want to talk about the that one first? All right. No, no, it's so... just the most important thing about this story is everybody you... arguing on the internet as to whether or not it's going to be exclusive. Oh, that's true. I'm already tired of this. Time? For Indiana Jones, I'm this this argument. That's why I breeze past it. I'm so tired of this. I know, but we have happen. to talk about it. We have to. But do we have? It's probably, noteworthy. It, we have to. The answer is probably yes. The answer is this one probably yes. It's exclusive. It's a new IP. Yes. Wow. I really do think this one is. I love it's this, but like you're going against the collective internet. <laughs> uh, fine, fight me on it. It's it's a new IP, quote unquote, that hasn't been done in a very long but time. But Elaine, it's, it's a new. license. Disney's not going to let them do that. Money talks, Donnie. Yeah, it does. And Microsoft has a lot of it. I I don't. I came here to fight. I I <laughs> look. I got nothing. Microsoft. See, you were. Right. I like to surprise people. I like to. I looked at this for a long time, and I really thought about it. And I understand the point, the counterpoint that like, oh, it's licensed. Oh, it's Disney. I get that. But Indiana Jones has been stagnant for how long? That last movie sucked. It was bad. I don't think anyone's going to argue with me on that last one. It was not a good film. I can see enough money going from Microsoft to Disney to quiet them down for a hot minute. Do whatever you're going to do with Disney Plus. Roll those movies out fresh and hot. We'll put this thing out on Xbox. Just just to now play devil's advocate, because I think that I think <laughs> I want to. I mean, that's where I would go with it. But just play devil's advocate for the people <laughs> out there saying that this was a deal that was inked long before the acquisition, everything. I think that's totally possible. And at, I still think then it could very well still be a timed exclusive. I yeah, could it still very I well see it being like it's first year on Xbox and then it comes I, later. If the deal was penned before all this stuff without not knowing all this was going to happen, because that stuff was in the works for a really long time too. Yeah. So they knew about it the whole time. And so this game's not, not even in development. Right. <laughs> People are acting that's like they've thing. already concluded everything about everything it's like they haven't even started making it i just i don't know i don't see like they paid a lot of money for this company and you've said that before um 
this one's big. I could see them really wanting it. At least I could timed. See that. At least timed. At, at the very least, yeah, timed. But I, I could see them just being like, you know what, screw it. But my initial reaction when the news broke, I'm so over every time Bethesda's linked to a game, the collective internet arguing over the reasons why and why it's not. It's like, I'm ready for Xbox to put this to bed. I, I don't want to keep doing this every time. And here's the ultimate thing, which we said when they bought them. I don't care. It's coming to Game Pass. I don't care. That's where <laughs> the reason I, I don't care. Pass this and I'm going to put it on I, Ouya. I don't care. Put it on Stadia. It's coming to Game Pass. That's all I care about. It's, I can play it on my phone. Such yeah. a stupid thing to say. But like, I did. I really don't. I don't care. If it's a timed exclusive, cool. If it's only on Xbox, cool. If it's on everything, fine. I don't care. There were long <laughs> threads. I have an Xbox list that I follow with like all the Xbox podcasters and creators right. and stuff. And there was long threads of back and forth. Exclusive or not exclusive. No, uh-uh. It's going to be on PlayStation. It's Disney. It's like, who cares? It's who on care? Game Pass. I did. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. I don't care. It's on Game Pass. <laughs> on, I want that's what I took away from the news. We're getting an Indiana Jones game on Game Pass. I just want a T-shirt that says, "I don't care if it's on Game Pass." Like as long as it's on Game Pass, I don't care. It's a I don't, sweet I just, deal. I, I don't know. I this one I could see because it's a big deal and it's like the first fresh one, the fresh IP that that hasn't already been linked to PlayStation, like other stuff like Deathloop and everything like that. Yeah, I could see them do. I could see this being the one where they're just like, well. Too bad, so sad. We threw a bunch of money at Disney. Buy an Xbox. <laughs> Buy an Xbox. Play it on your phone. Play it on Buy PC. Game Pass. Mm-hmm. They don't care if you own an Xbox. Game Pass All right. Now let's talk about Star Wars, kids. Uh oh, that's why. Um, that's why Nathan's here. Damn it! You well, you left the door open again. You really got to lock the back door. Just to warn you, <laughs> this is your first time podcasting. He talks a lot about Star Wars. <laughs> Even better, because I don't. That's cool. All right. Well, let's let's do the quick one first, and then we'll talk about the long one in a second. Um. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order has received its next-gen systems patch at this point. Uh, basically, you get a performance mode, right, and a normal mode or some such nonsense. Dev says it's amazing. I've heard really good things. Yeah. I've heard that it runs really, really nicely. So I have not played it yet. Neither have I. Because I'm a bad video game at all. I, ha- I just, it, was, it came out at a time when I just could not. There's too much. So mm. cool. I get to play the best version of it now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I played the first time, and my takeaway from it was like it was... It was like kind of good. Like it was good. Like everything was production. But you, I think you might remember Nathan. It was like I thought it was kind of jerky and kind of janky. At, like at launch, it was a little rough around the edges. At launch, it was. Yeah, it was a little, mm-hmm. l- little stiff. You could call it. You know, stiff. Yeah, not not quite smoothed out yet. Yeah, stiff. But I like stiff. That was a good way of putting it. It was kind of weird. <laughs> I like the idea that the pot, the video game couldn't get out of bed. It had to stretch a little. <laughs> oh, and yeah, it was like oh, oh, cracking like back. Meat. Get a little morning, yoga like, going. Yeah, it's got. It's, I got to do my my DDP yoga. It's gonna yeah. be fine. Don't worry about it. You know? Okay, now we can talk about it. <laughs> so I'm excited to go back to it. Yes. So me too. I don't. I haven't seen the actual Series X slash S patch on the no, Series X yet, though. So, like, it doesn't show up on on like the game library as being X enhanced. You know what I mean? I don't think it. I, I don't, is it? I don't think it is X enhanced. I think they just patched the game. Like it's yeah, just... so they've had the patch, so you can go in there, you can change performance mode, but this isn't technically a next gen patch, right? Yeah, right? no, this isn't the enhanced version of the game. This is right. okay. just the regular. It's it's just the backwards compatible version of the game that just runs this well now, but better. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is so, just there. Here we have performance options for you now, which yeah, is, yeah. I mean, I'm that's welcome for me. Like, I want the choice. I like the choice. Eighteen thousand six hundred and sixty dollars, you beautiful people. Ooh, we are that money, so kids. close. We're three hundred and forty dollars away. Donnie might actually explode, so if you're gonna do it, you might not do it. If we had nineteen thousand, I'm gonna like He's gonna have a heart attack. Yeah, it's gonna blow my mind. That was so far beyond here's the thing. Sorry to interrupt you, Nathan. I'm gonna do this a lot. How dare you? Um, When we started today, I was legit concerned because so many of our podcasts that we're doing this with, we share listeners and we're Mm -hmm. going on last. I was like all of our listeners have already donated and like, especially with game tech, like the, it started off kind of, I want to say slow, you know, we had a few donations, but not like a lot. And I was like, Oh no. Like I kind of felt like maybe we're letting people down and that's Thanks. just me. Cause I take it all on, you know, but I, I was just like, oh, I want to do more. And then like with Shaq started getting going we started building momentum and people were donating with Kevin and Garrett and Rebecca. And it's like, now I'm just like over the moon. I'm like, this is amazing. Like, look what we did. And now it's like, we could do 19. It's blowing my mind. You, you you need to. You're gonna hurt yourself. Like I'm concerned. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, I'm ex- I'm just. 
Look, Johnny's about to have a hernia I'm sorry. over here. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't apologize. The enthusiasm is rad. Like what this community of people has done for somebody who I'm needs really proud. help. I'm is really very proud. lovely. Yeah, it's really like a cool thing to be a part of. Yeah. It makes my heart all warm and fuzzy, and that's yeah. weird. You know, like it's a weird feeling. It's like, ooh, good vibes. Mm. <laughs> Tricky. All right, Nathan, talk to me about since you're you're look, you're the Star Wars guy. Let's be serious. You're sitting in the Imperial Super ship. Emperor. Yeah. Talk to me about what Ubisoft is doing here. So Ubisoft is what I call them. <laughs> We're not having wrong. a fight on the show. <laughs> <laughs> We're not doing this today, sir. <laughs> And their developer, Massive, is doing an open world Star Wars game, which Massive, they did Division 1 and 2, which were both really decent games. I mean, they weren't great. They were like, you know, 8 out of 10 type games. They were good. I liked them, personally. Um, but AAA games, 8 out of 10 is just decent. Sorry. It's, it's fine. Yeah. fine. <laughs> you know, it's fine. It's kind of mediocre, with with really. so many games to play, you know what I mean? <laughs> it, um, yes. <laughs> yeah, but it's still, it's a funny thing to say. Like, those are big games with tons of content. They're fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> But they are actually really fun to play. So if you haven't played the Division games, I think one of them is even on Game Pass. At least it was if it's not still. Um, but it's it's a it's a fun game. The second one was set in Washington, D.C., which had, you know, is interesting now. But they are making a new game based in the Star Wars universe. It's open world. It could be Division-esque. It might not be. You don't know. Uh, we, haven't, we don't have a lot of details except for a screenshot, basically, that says that Massive is making the game. But if you're to look a little bit deeper behind what Massive has done, it's kind of that that genre. Yeah. So you could look at maybe like a bounty hunter type game where you're not a force user in that universe. You're doing your thing, uh, which actually sounds pretty compelling to me because a lot of the games, you're always the Jedi, right? You look at yes. Jedi Fallen Order, that's built for that. But if you look at like a ground roots game and you're like a, a bounty hunter or a scoundrel or someone just trying to make their way in the galaxy, that's a perfect perfect area to do that in do you know so what give is, me like a go ahead do you know what this makes me think of and since you're here you'll know do you remember republic commando on oh the i love xbox? republic commando so i love you, republic yeah. commando. Oh, you see his face? one of my favorite X original <laughs> xbox games love it i tried to get dying to play republic commando he said no so good. look at somebody the way that nathan looks at people when they say republic commando republic commando <laughs> we have we're having a moment donnie right let us have our moment i've been teasing him since he came into the show and now we're having our we're having our moment um <laughs> I want that. I want like a squad based that kind of a game. And I love mm -hmm. that game. And I think that that would kind of fit really nicely with what you're with their background. Right. So like, yeah, give me more of that. <laughs> give me and more it could fit in with what they're doing with Disney Plus. They're doing a Bad Batch series, which is going to be, you know, kind of taking those clone commandos that we've seen in the Clone Wars and, you know, telling more of their story. So I'm wondering if they're going to tie in any of that with this, if they're going to do that or if they're going to do more of that any man make your own person is in a galaxy be, type situation it's gonna be like more like story because they did they mentioned story driven and i don't think of the division as story driven like there's some be, narrative there, there but it's not story driven there's there's a pretty decent story in both the division games yeah, there, it's um but it's a lot of people think of division they think of like the post-game content or they think of all like the, mm -hmm. the raid type situations yeah. where you need to have the high level gear and you go into the dark zones and all those things but the the core of division is actually a really interesting story about the T virus. Oh, T virus. Yeah, no, I mean, I played, I played a, a bit of the second one. The, the dollar virus or the, the dollar virus. Something yeah, like yeah. That. I, play, I played a bit of the second one. I just, it's not what I would, I would not call it story driven. There is a story, but is it driven? Like, is that the game? No. You don't have to really pay attention to it to keep playing. No, that's fair. Well, it's like I mean, the Assassin's Creed or any Ubisoft yeah, game. You don't have to pay games. attention to the story to keep playing. Yeah, I guess. You don't have to care. You never have to care, right? We're never up against it unless it's like, you know. I was wondering if maybe this could be more of a narrative RPG and maybe not the division type. I know everybody's going division because that's what they know, but could it be something else? Well, I want it to be Kotor, but we're not going to be that's what that. I was thinking. So I don't want, but I also don't know that I need another Force user game. Like I think I'm with Nathan on this. Like I'm good. Let let's let oh, me. Oh, I'm do with you there. Yeah, I'm with I'm, I'm with both. You know of what you I mean? Too. I don't know. I'm excited so, about this. How long do we think this is out, though? Like five, ten. Isn't it funny that both of these games, like even the at least with the one, we got like a a little snippet, like make believe trailer. But like both these games are years and years and years away. It was crazy oh, yeah. that they even. These, these are just hype announcements. They want you to know that they're doing something. That there's something on the horizon to get you excited about. That's basically what these announcements both were. Yeah. But uh, I think we're not going to see anything really tangible until maybe 23, 24. Also, absolutely. Signals also signals like the end of the e exclusivity which i know a lot of people are mm -hmm. you know, catching on yeah i think look 
I think this is the fill the January quiet machine time video games. You know, like it, it's like uh, trailers. Like they just want to remember. Hey guys, remember cool video games? We're making them. I promise. I do That's worry when games get announced like this that are so far out. Then you end up waiting on them for five or six, seven years. And then you're disappointed because you built all this stuff in your head about what it should well, be. Well, because like two or three years go by and you're like, what, where, where is it? What's going on? You know, like that's the problem. You start announcing games for their even in development. I would prefer to get an announcement six months before release. That's where I mm-hmm. always want to be with video games. And I understand that's not how PR and marketing and, and the spin machine work, but that's what I always want because I feel like I'm, I know what to expect and that I'm getting it. It's done by then or very close. And how much of this is like the Disney way? Because they do this with the movies and stuff too, right? They're like, we've got a Iron Man movie coming out in 2026. You know, like they, they kind of have like these long roadmaps for their stuff. They do. Right. And, you know, they're, I don't know. I, I don't love it. I hate it. I hate it in movies. I don't like it in games. I just want to know. I want you to give me the six month window and yeah. then give me the video game. I don't. At least Machine Games was like, and now we're going to go away now. Like, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's going to be a little while before you hear from us again. I just they don't, we know it's just, shh, just stay over there. <laughs> Stop making trailers. <laughs> like it's fine. I know that that's like I said. I know it's not how it works. I just wish it was. So we got one more story. It just it wouldn't be a lull in news without Joseph Ferris <laughs> giving an interview. I'm not going to repeat the text of this because it's not family friendly. He basically dropped a bunch of f bombs. He hates the name of the series X and S Xboxes. Yeah. Uh, and he wanted to make sure you really understand that he doesn't like them. Uh, there is a sentence in here that just says, he really effing losing doesn't it, man. like them. He really effing doesn't like them. <clears throat> They're losing it, man. <laughs> this guy, they got to keep him off a microphone. <laughs> yeah, it's like, kind of like you got to be a little, at least a little nervous when you're like, hey, what do you think, Joseph? <laughs> like, oh, no. right. like, I just, I wish every time that he starts talking, I'm like, please stop. Can we Nothing get him like a media gonna... person? You're a PR person. Uh, they probably all quit. They probably tried. Yeah. They probably tried to write stuff for him to say, and he probably set it on. We've fire been talking like about this for a year since they named it. So my it, my answer with names is that I don't think they matter because I think there's plenty of examples of dumb names that just catch on. So sure. I don't. I don't really think it matters if the product's good. That said, if a lot of people don't like the name, then it's obviously the name isn't good. Even if it's a good name, if the majority of people don't like it, then it's a bad name. I haven't liked any of the names of their consoles i don't i did not like the xbox 360's name i did not like xbox one you could have at least stuck with that and said xbox two or next i think that would have been worse that would have been even it's just they're all bad like the fourth one and they're like xbox two like that's worse i think leaving the x and s in when you're switching the generation over was a bad move man it's confusing it's it's just it's confusing i like it i think it sounds techie it's very techie. sure and the- i point to phil spencer just recently did a giant interview with the Again? verge yeah but this one all the time. this one's this one took me like 20 minutes to read it's big where does, where does this man find all this time and uh they asked him about this and he goes yeah he's like you know obviously saying series s and series x and like in a sentence he even says he's like it's kind of a mouthful there's a lot of yeah. s- in there he's like but you know what and this is probably the best way that i I've ever really heard anybody address it. He goes, but you know what? People walk into a store. One of them's five hundred dollars. One of them's three hundred dollars. He goes, you know what? To most people, that's the one that matters. Sure, that's the I difference. Agree. Doesn't matter I what agree. the name is. He's like, one's black, I... one's white, but it doesn't matter. One's five hundred dollars, and he's like, I walk in, I get an iPhone. I don't know which one's which. I know one's a thousand dollars and one's seven hundred dollars. He's like, that <sighs> really informs me to which one I want most. But it's like phones do this well. They just iterate the number at the end. And the PlayStation has done this well. Because you know what the newest one is. It's the one with the biggest number. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. for for non-video game people or people who just don't follow it, it's a lot less confusing to find a scheme that you can iterate. And yes, it's not sexy or fun. And you don't get a hot new name. You just get a... But you when know. we make these arguments on Twitter, we make it in this idea that like there's a, there's a shelf of a lineage of xbox consoles they're all in a row and you got to pick one but there's not there are no xbox well, ones like they're let me give they're all going off the shelves like you know they're all being done away with eventually it'll just be the new ones you just buy that one yes but the in, in the interim there was a story like when the when the series x pre-orders went up people started accidentally buying, buying one one yeah, X's. But, yeah it does happen but you when know? you read that story it was like four thousand of four hundred thousand orders Sure. So it was 1% yeah. of those people that were just dumb and did that. So was well, that really a story or? 
I don't know because when you search on Amazon, that's part of Amazon's algorithm yeah. being crazy. Is that a story? Too, but Those could have just been bots. I, I, yes, I. <laughs> This is one thing I think that Sony does better. I just do. I think I they found a name. They found a name that worked, and this is, there's many things that everybody does better. But this is just Nintendo's not good at to see their kids. They're just not. Oh, oh man, you go look at their lineage. But did it matter? Do you mean DS they sold? Uh, it did. They for sold the 150 Wii U. million DSs. <laughs> I genuinely think for the Wii U, the name mattered. But but I you can't say for the Wii U it mattered when the DS was selling at the same time and it sold astronomical. Those aren't those are apple to apple comparisons and that doesn't They're match. not. They're not because it's never true. And this is not a Nintendo podcast, but I'll make this point. Handheld stuff never plays by the same rules ever. It mm. never has. It never has because the Game Boy Advance did the same thing Man, they by had adding the DS the Lite, the DSi, the DS. <laughs> there are other countries that they dump tons of handheld stock into. That's a whole different thing, yeah. you know. Well, when but we I, were talking about this at the launch, you know, I mentioned when I was buying my TV, like trying to buy a TV and following those model numbers, that's a train wreck. That's a nightmare, too. Yeah. Although yeah. LG does an okay job with that. I think it's fine. I think this is just like gamer culture. This, yes. Just exaggerating something. This is, We're just, we're nitpicking nonsense, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't matter. You're right. In six months when the old consoles are finally completely off shelves and it no, doesn't matter anymore, it doesn't matter anymore. Who cares? Aren't there like five versions of the NVIDIA 3000 line? You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, it's like... RTX? What, did yeah, you get one well, of those? No. You're going to get confused on those? But, but also, like, my mom is not going to buy a graphics card. Like, yeah, you know, but gamers are. How do you know? There's more <laughs> graphics cards than consoles. We get told and that all the time. my mom is so cool. <laughs> 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 uh, I have to remote into her computer to fix things. Let's just not. Um, <laughs> I love my mother. She's not listening to this. I ultimately, my issue is that I just think it's it's odd how the collective media will focus in on one of these points for, like, one company. Yes. Right. And then it just becomes it's the, the narrative. weakest argument, though. It's the weakest argument. It's so dumb. It's stupid. Arguing about console names is ultimately super stupid. It doesn't matter. It's it like, matters. What was not. the Ouya? Or the Wii? Was the Wii a great name? Sold 100 no. million of those. It, the name ultimately only matters in the transition period if it's confusing. And after that mm -hmm. six month period is over, we're done here. Who cares? Yeah. You know, like, who cares? It's like everything else. I don't care. It'd be nice if you would, like, you know. We went Genesis Saturn Dreamcast. <laughs> Oh, Dreamcast <laughs> was a good name, though. <laughs> GameCube was great because it was actually a cube. Game Gear. Game Boy. Yeah, console names are stupid, kids. Yeah, they're dumb. <laughs> they're all dumb. <laughs> Party. Like, when you say them out loud in an adult company right. that doesn't play games, you feel stupid every time. <laughs> Before we move on, um, I did want to bring up, did you guys see that it was deleted, but did you guys see the tweet from Clobril about Halo? No. Cobra said me. that Halo will not have a battle royale, which that's the news part that I think was worth talking about. But uh, he also said that instead of having battle royale, it will have big team battle like 2.0, like a new yeah. take on big team battle, but like bigger. This and makes I was sense thinking like Battlefront or like Battlefield. Is I don't know that, that the they're going to go that far, but... I'm not surprised it's not going to have a battle royale. I know everybody else was really lashed onto that idea, and I was just sitting here like I'm just not all the way buying it, but I'm also don't I don't have an argument against it happening. Mm -hmm. So you know, but yeah, give us like some sort of big team stuff. I don't think they're going to go as far as that. What are those team sizes? Sixty four. It's like a hundred players. Yeah. It's no, a bunch. There's, yeah, there's no way. Um, was it, isn't big team battle in like Halo Four like supposed to be thirty two, thirty two? Is that is what that, that is? what it is? Dude, you're asking me about multiplayer Halo. I don't know. I don't know anything. <laughs> Come on, Donnie. You're, you're the knowledge base on that. Right? I just played Halo 4. <laughs> yeah, no. He finally played the hottest video game. After ever. Nathan told me to play them all one at a time, I finally <laughs> started playing them. You finally got the one, though. <laughs> Have you done Gears yet? That's what we were supposed to do. I was supposed to do Halo. He's supposed to do Gears. He hasn't I've played done, Gears? I did Gears 5, but I did not do Hive Busters yet. I started Hive Busters. Yeah, I do Hive Busters. Hive Busters really is it. very good. I. It looks I, very pretty. So it's so colorful. I, okay, Nathan, what do you think about this? So Halo not having a Battle Royale mode is kind of weird, especially right now in the current climate with all these big shooters coming out that, that have it. And that is a very sustainable, very easy um, revenue model for a lot of these companies just to put on a new skin that doesn't matter you know, overall. It's just a skin the way you look in the game. You charge extra for ones that you make purple or whatever, right? So... For, for it to be a continuity stream for them for revenue, I would think that a Battle Royale is a no-brainer, right, from from that perspective. But if they're trying to do their own thing, right, and make a big team battle like 2.0 or whatever, make it like a 50-on-50 50 50 or something, that just doesn't seem quite as interesting to me 
because when when you play a battle royale like apex legends right you're you're a team of three or two or whatever it is against you know 30 other teams and then the best of the teams get to that final ring and go from there and they're the winners but if it's like a big team battle 2.0 to me in my mind that's like you have two big teams as it says and it doesn't feel as epic it doesn't feel as good once you get to that final uh, he did mention know, round. that they're gonna have like big uh like tanks and you know and ghosts and like plane drops and, like they're gonna make it epic so if you're looking for that grander he mentioned in his tweets that he thought that was gonna be a part of it does that do anything for you no i don't i don't know until i see it right sure of course just thinking of it from my current perspective and and what i've what i've experienced so far for them to say that you still just have a one versus one technically right you're red versus blue or whatever just a grunt in this big yeah warfare right and part of the thrill of like an apex is like you could be in a firefight between three other teams and who's going to come out on top? Yeah, you're king of the And then you revive your team and keep on going. Exactly. And if you don't, if you don't have that scenario, it doesn't doesn't make it last. You know what I'm saying? So you don't have that that living power where people want to keep going back and get that thrill if it's just a two two team thing. I spent a lot of time in college with a lot of folks who played a lot of Halo competitively, and I don't know. I would be curious how they feel about this because they would not have wanted a battle royale at the time. You know, or even now ish in the last couple of years, sure. it's to, th- to them. That's not Halo. Right. Yep. Oh, I, I get that from somewhere else. I don't want that in this thing. So I'm kind of curious because I don't play multiplayer Halo. I love the campaigns, but I won't play the, the multi really. It's not me. I'm curious how that community feels about this back and forth conversation, if they even care. You know, but that community used to be the lead community for multiplayer sure. first person shooters. And now they're not. But also like and they're not does- close. Do they really want to try to push into a space where they have some really stiff competition for player time? Like, do they? People have invested hundreds of dollars, thousands sure. of hours into Fortnite. Do they really think that they're going to draw? But those I think that's a space that Halo them? lost. I kind of feel like that's what you make Halo for. Because Halo used looking, to be the leader in that space, and now they're not. They missed that boat, so I almost feel like they have to let that go and and stick with what they do well and or go the battlefield route and make it kind of a little bit of a bigger battle because they i think they missed i think they missed the boat on getting player share for battle royale at this point Mm -hmm. it's too late i i found this news mostly surprising he did mention that forge will be a big part of this and maybe people can make their own battle royale i don't know if that's going to take off or something all right here's ultimately my thoughts um i think you're missing the boat if you're like the whole like a big part of their pitch was we're going to make Halo free to play and that just screams battle royale. What are you making it free to play if like I think of I'm really thinking of my son because not so much me, but my son, he's really into Halo. He plays battle royale. He doesn't play firefights or capture the flag or king. He doesn't play any other shooter. He plays battle royale. And if Halo had a battle royale, he'd be there day one playing battle royale. And if it has a big team battle, he's probably never going to play it. Because if he doesn't know it, he's not going to take to it. It's not what he knows. It's not what he likes. It's not what he plays. It's not what his friends play. Sure. So Kevin actually won me over to this. Kevin was like, they need to capture a new brand of Halo players. Like, you know, it's not so much about, like, you can still have the firefights and the big team battles and stuff. But, like, Halo has to find the new Halo fan, the new Halo player. You can't rely on the people that played Halo 20 years ago. And I agree with that. I think Kevin was spot on with that, actually. Because if you're constantly catering to that person that's 35 and grew up playing Halo, like Halo's going to die that way. I I don't know how much time they have left. And I this will be an unpopular opinion. But I think that a lot of their share has been pulled away by something like Destiny yeah. and some yeah. Battle Royales. And I don't actually know if they have enough time on the clock with this franchise to make up the ground. Like, I think this, I don't, I don't think they have infinite numbers of halos left. This might be their halo. I yeah. I think the people, you know what I mean? The people who are, the reason halo is still happening are be, is because those people who've played it for decades are holding on. Sure. Uh, I don't, I don't know that you get new players. I don't know. You get a new fan base. I think that it's, I think that it, that it might be on its way out slowly, it, but it might be, it is. You if know? it launches without battle Royale, that does also doesn't mean it won't get one. Sure. They could Absolutely. do the big the big team battle. Maybe it doesn't work in two years or later, you know, they launch a battle royale. That wouldn't or be they, uncommon for a service shooter game that we know of. Or they could look at it and say, hey, you know, Microsoft could say, hey, we're doing 
better with gears. We're doing better with this. We're doing, maybe it's time to sunset this thing and leverage resources into a different place. Who knows? I I can see it happening though. I really don't know that we have any, like a never ending stream of halo left in front of us for this, for this, you know. And if Forge does, like if people do create battle rails and they start playing it, it might be one of those things where the people demand it. You know, they show it like we're not playing big team battle. We're playing our own battle royales because you won't give us yeah. one. Make one. That And that could very well happen to you. I could very well be wrong. But, you know, it's I think that this game is going to be a really interesting tell for what the future holds for Halo. I just want a story. I don't care about battle royale. I just yeah. want it to be good. But battle I just royale. Want Halo to focus on the single player first, yeah. right? Focus yes. on that single player story. And then multiplayer. And this is sacrilegious for any Halo fan, right? Make the multiplayer second place and just like make it what it has been in the past to satiate the fans that want multiplayer and just give us a fantastic, amazing story with great set pieces. I would really love that. That's all I I really want. Coming hot off of these last two Halo games, which were not my personal favorites, I would really love a a game to pull me back to um, the story. I mean, carte blanche, if it were me, if there was a Battle Royale, I'd play it. I'd play a few rounds just because I know Battle Royale. It's like, yeah, I get it. I know I'm going to try to shoot everybody until I'm the last one standing. If it's like I big already... team battle, it's this thing I've never done before and I don't really know to go and I don't know where people spawn. I'm not going to play that. It's like it's like Gears. I don't play Gears multiplayer because it's like they're really good and I'm not and I don't know what to do and I'm just not going to do it. I only ever played Gears in Horde mode. I play Horde. Yeah, that's I it. like Horde mode. See, that's I... where that's where if they just give us the same Halo, I'm like, I'm never going to play that. I but this, I'm speaking to this from a person who does not like competitive multiplayer. Like I just don't. I don't like battle royales either, and it's they're just not for me. I just don't enjoy them. So and I realize like what that you know that uh, I, I play a Halo horde too. I'll do that. I would play a Halo horde. Yeah, I would, I would play uh-huh. like I like competitive right. multiplayer. So yeah. all right. Well, I think that does it for the news. Yeah. Why don't we? So we we kind of queued this up a little before the holidays and then decided to hold it for this episode because we had some time here to sit and dig into some of this. So the Xbox One has had its time in the sun uh, and it has been sunset into the series consoles. But, you know, we wanted to look back at that, the Xbox One and how it evolved and how it changed and its weird <laughs> rolling legacy that it's had that led us to the point that we're at now. So, Donnie, why don't you why don't you get us started here? Let's yeah. talk about these. The best way to appreciate what we have is kind of look at where it came from, right? Yeah. And I did this uh, with the Switch and Wii U, and I thought this would be a really great way for like a special episode like this. It'd be a really great way of kind of ringing it in and just kind of remembering the Xbox One. So uh, I wrote down some bullet points. So originally unveiled in May 2013, shown again in June at E3, and then launched in November 13th, 2013. Uh, Xbox One was troubled to say it best <laughs> tv 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 it was a really ugly unveiling internet arguing and launch for this thing it was the among the ugliest i have ever seen the leaks happened way out in advance of its unveiling that it can it required an online constant yeah. online always online connection that leaked in april which led then microsoft studios employee adam orth to tweet Sorry, I don't get the drama around having an always-on console. Every device is now always on. That's the world we live in. Hashtag deal with it. I still feel my fingers rubbing the sides of my temples listening to you reread this tweet going, couldn't have missed the mark in a bigger way, buddy. That is a great, that's great PR, guys. Really good PR. so stupid. When spicy, I like it. Spicy. <laughs> like it is. That is a heavily spiced take on this thing. A little bit of cayenne, you know. You dump the whole bottle into the chili by accident, and just hope no one notices. Oops. <laughs> he was let go it. in subsequent weeks, and he's done a lot of speaking tours about, you know, like internet kind of, you know, yeah. pressure and 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 you know, going viral and having people everybody hate you and stuff like that. So Don't it's actually. It's a good read, but yeah, like don't antagonize. Obviously, when you're a brand like Xbox, you have millions of passionate fans. Don't insult their intelligence and don't, don't, don't chastise them for their opinions. That's not a good idea. It's just not deal with it. Is not a good look deal with it. So bad. That's a bad way to go. Look, don't. If I walked into a Zoom meeting and just said deal with it at the end of a statement to a client, I would get tossed you, out too. you could have done this a lot this of is the better code ways. i'm going to design deal with it deal, deal with, with it. it like <laughs> people don't like that the people just, don't like that 
People don't like that. Um, so fear began to snowball before the thing was ever even shown that you couldn't play your games, you couldn't play used games, you couldn't play without an internet connection. Oh, God. President of Xbox then, Don Matrick, unveiled the console at a special event in May that showcased the console centered around the mandatory Kinect device focused at your living room with 15 minutes of ESPN and HBO and Netflix talk to kick off the launch of their new box. I, I remember watching this. I remember where I was sitting when this happened. I remember the pulling off of the cover covering. I remember this. I have PTSD from this event. Do I, you remember them scanning in a skateboard? Yeah, I remember. It in the game. I remember the whole like. Oh, you remember the console? Like it was in that glass case, like the big box, and then the connect on the side and everything. Didn't it was they all pull up cover off of it to show it. Yeah, yeah, and they the lifted glass. up the box. Like, I, oh, I'm gonna have nightmares. Like, <laughs> wake up in a cold sweat listening to Donnie Matrick unveil the nightmare <laughs> console that I don't. I was like, no, no, why would you do that, bro? <laughs> a month later, at E3 2013, Xbox One made more waves when they announced 4.99 which would be an immediately trounced later that night by PlayStation, whose box was considerably stronger of the two, was smaller of the two, priced at three ninety nine of the two, and the now infamous, here's how you trade games on PlayStation. That, I, that little video where they handed each other video games to put in their consoles. <laughs> I still, oh, it's so bad. <laughs> this led to a firestorm and outcry and backlash from Xbox Faithful, which led to the most, and at least to me, the most I infamous quote from a leader of a brand in video games. If you want to play without internet connection, we have a console for that. It's called the 360. <laughs> That's I, can what you his imagine, answer was to can people. Can you imagine a world in which you are a high paid executive? Oh my gosh. Selling a $500 video game box in 2013, which is not 2021. And we're going up against PlayStation, who's just like, okay, bro, we screwed this up last time. We figured this. They're one just out. dealing haymakers left and right. Say, saying something <laughs> like this, like, what did? Who did you think, Mr. Matrick? What do you have to say about the people that are in the army or, uh, you know, live in I remote areas it. that that don't have an internet connection? Well, we have a console for them. It's called the Xbox 360. <laughs> this is the most memorable quote to me of the entirety of the Xbox One. Like it, there's and it's terrible. That's never gonna die. That will live in it, forever. It, like that will be it, remembered. Like every time I see Don Matrick's face or somebody yeah. says his name, I hear his voice saying this. Yep. And that's not a great legacy. Oh, sure. so I'll never forget the way. I'll never forget that quote in that video. I was reading. Okay. Uh. Well, we're gonna get into. It. We're gonna get into it. Let's. Yeah. Let's keep. keep but his smugness in the way he said this still resonates inside of my skull. Continue. So the backlash after E3 was immediate. Uh, Matrick was gone weeks later, leaving for Zynga. Of all places, um, Microsoft immediately backpedals. They cut they cut the Connect requirement, although it's still shipped in the box. They walk back the online and disk stuff. They walk back everything. It's a thirty day check. It's not an everyday check. We're redoing everything. No family share. They basically just they cut bait it. on all of their policies and they, just redid it. They fired Matrick. He went to Zynga. They lit his career on fire on his way out the door because you don't, they just took everything that he helped build there and were like, you know what? That's bad. Put lighter fluid on that. That needs to go. Uh, it's, this was unreal. I've never seen anything like this. It's still launched in November. They didn't delay it. They didn't retail like they launched. It was, uh, you know, a launch. It launched with uh, Rise, Son of Rome, Dead Rising 3, Forza Motorsport 5. I put in Power Star Golf. It's still one that I still play in a launch game. How many launch games do you guys still play? And I still play Power Star Golf. Um, uh, Rise is pretty good. That's yeah. probably uh, Forza Motorsports 5 was a good game. Dead I played, Rising. I play, yeah, I played Dead Rising 3 and Rise, Son of Rome at launch, I believe. Titanfall Rise came out way, in March. Just, you know, that was their I answer to Destiny. Interjecting real quick. We're at 18725. Oh, we're so close. Come on, kid. We're getting there, guys. I can't sell anything else, guys. I sold so much of my stuff. <laughs> I, I, I can't. I, I got can't nothing else to sell. sell anything else. Just just we'll use the snark of our Don Matrick burial that we're doing on the <laughs> podcast to fuel your donations. So the first question that I had here is when did you get your first Xbox One? And and the really where I wanted to go from this was how did this this launch affect you? Because I was a 360 player, Same. devoutly. I was always 360 played. I always had a 360. I rotated with a couple Wii's and a couple PlayStation 3's, like for exclusives and stuff like that. But I always had a 360. It was my main place to play games, and I jumped ship. Wow! Did you really? Oh, I absolutely jumped ship. And uh, this so... is Nathan and I really started getting to know each other at this time. And I was like, 
absolutely not. This is on fire. This is terrible. It's too expensive. <laughs> it's not. It doesn't. It's it's too, it's more expensive. It's less powerful. It's got connect. It's ugly. It's like it's all these things. It was every. There was not a whole lot of things you could say good about it. You know, like there were very little good things to say about it. It's true. I actually bought an Xbox One at launch. Um, launch day, you had it. I did. I had one at launch. Wow. And wow. I got a I got a PlayStation at launch as well because that was the life that I was living. And I per, I pre ordered both of these consoles during had the their chat evening. thing that you couldn't chat. You had to you got the connector. I was like, oh god, the what a mess. Uh, I don't want to talk to anybody on the internet. So that was great for me because I was like, hi, I'm a I'm a female on the internet. No, thank you. Goodbye. Uh, that was great. I loved that. Uh, I. I was in a I was in a similar place to where I am now, where I had the disposable income to um, try it on and see what the fight. So, this feeds into my this thing is on fire. I want to see how they fixed it because they did fix it between when it was lo- announced and when it was launched and fixed it. And I was like, I want to see. I want to be at the ground floor of this thing and see how it evolves. Sure, it's a lot of the way I feel about like quote unquote bad video games, right? Like. I want to see what changes over time if something changes, especially if it's big and notable. But I also have the disposable income to be able to do that. So I bought one of these at launch. I played Rise, Son of Rome at launch and liked it a lot, actually. I loved the controller for this box so much that I have stuck forward with that. Like it, holding that controller for me personally and then holding that, you know, crappy PlayStation controller that drives me insane. I was like, I played more third-party games on this Xbox that was apparently on fire and looked like a giant VCR than on my PlayStation. Just because of But that. it was silent. It was quiet. It was. I, it, I like the glass button thing that they did. Yep. I thought that was cool, mm-hmm. the little touch button. I want mm-hmm. to make an important note. I have two of those VCRs. You can kind of see them uh, in my screenshot stacked up. Um, the launch one is still there. It still works. My kids were playing the launch one up until a month ago. Fortnite. The fan in that day. thing is huge. If you haven't disassembled oh, it yeah. to see just how big it is, it's, it's massive. It's the whole side of the, <laughs> of the VCR. Um, those things were, look, they came off that 360. Those things were built to last, dude. You and could people, run that over a truck. I remember at the time, people made so much fun of how big it was. It's huge. Where's all that energy now? Everybody's console is big. Now. PlayStation 5 is it. gigantic. It is gigantic. <laughs> it's a monolith. There are two I, I things, though. Day. <laughs> two things that the Kinect did really well that I like that I'll that were on the Xbox One. First, you know those in-game codes. Yeah, you, that you had scan to them. put in the, the code. QR you just, code. Yep, yeah, just that scan was cool. Connect and it was done. Good. And the other thing that I liked about it was just you know the Xbox on. I personally used it, and I actually had my TV plugged into it too, and I had it say watch whatever channel. It was fantastic. I, I really that. enjoyed using those. It was Alexa before Alexa. It was ahead of its time, man. And I, I love that. And I don't. I'm that person, uh, as I'm a Google kid and do all that stuff, I turn all of that off. And it's not because I'm scared of spyware or whatever. I think it's just annoying. I can't tell you oh, the amount okay. of times that I go to type something. It's like, do you mean something? Like, no, if I meant that, I would have typed it. Stop talking to me. Turn. I turn it all off. I turn, I turn Cortana it. off. I turn Google Assistant off. Oh, I hate all of all it. All of it's off. off. I don't use it on my phone, yeah. but I like I like the computer lady. I won't say her name because it will activate her. She's over there. And I liked the, I really did like the Connect features because I did like, I would walk into the room to play a video game and just say Xbox on and it would set my TV's input. It would turn on everything and get it ready. And by the mm-hmm. time I'm settled with my blanket and my old lady glasses or whatever, my tight <laughs> mug of tea, everything was ready. The only thing I always wished is that you, if you could ask it to rumble your controller. So I, cause I lost them in the couch all the time. Mm, that's smart you know what i mean i wanted that feature i would so. pay a nice thing to it because it's a kind of a shame that they didn't create like some sort of accessory you could plug it in via usb because it is an excellent camera streamer like, it's for people that want to stream games like with overlays and twitch and stuff on your xbox it is an excellent camera nice sensor and it's got the mic and audio and everything's built into it and uh that they was... use it at disney for for different line yeah. cues they use a legit connect in yeah. disney for their, their line cues they made an adapter from when, because when you went from the original Xbox One over to the X and S series Xbox Ones, there's no longer a Connect port. There was a special port in the original VCR, and they made an adapter that went. They sent they sent one to me for free because I requested it, much like the camera adapter for the PSVR. And those yep. things started going for crazy money on eBay at one point because they stopped making them. Mm-hmm. Um, but it essentially translates it to USB and then powers it. Well, it's interesting. It's cool. So. so. I got my first Xbox um, a little bit after, I think, meeting Nathan and like maybe right before we started PSVG or right after. I don't remember, but I remember it was the white one, which I think was the year after. 
It was the white one. The Arctic white. It was the white one when they dropped Connect. They dropped Connect. They released a white yeah. one for three ninety nine with Sunset Destiny. Overdrive. Oh yeah, that they did do Sunset right. one. Yep. And I got that one. So that's when they kind of got me back, and I wasn't even back. I was PlayStation Four, but I was like, I'm gonna get one because I wanted Sunset Overdrive. But in 2015, Ori was releasing. I had to play Ori, and that's when I got my my first Xbox One. But yeah, they they kind of lost me, and they they lost me for a while there. There was many. I think the first year or two of PSVG was many shows of me telling PSV or me telling Nathan was doomed. <laughs> like, really? dude, it's doomed. You've got to get off of there. <laughs> it was. Um, it's funny because I had it in my house, kind of as a. I wouldn't say like I started playing a lot more games on it because I like the controller, but it was when the backwards compatible stuff really started to snowball, and there like I could just start there. putting putting stuff in that's when it really became like my go-to box actually we're gonna get there yeah i figured that you know nathan your first one i know you were there day one i was there day one yeah, yeah so buddy. i mean i had it pre-ordered i had both of them you know the ps4 Same. and the xbox one but uh i mean and i loved it because xbox was more where i was at that was my jam and then i got that day one achievement i had the day one edition you know on on the controller i and still everything. have that in a in a drawer i still have that mm -hmm. controller i've traded in a bunch of controllers over the years but i kept that one and the project scorpio controller that i have because i love them yeah so much. you gotta keep yeah you gotta keep those those are those are pieces special. of history it's special i sold those and for that's where crazy money both of them <laughs> <laughs> the launch games the launch games all had a little like thing on the top of them that said day one launch that's edition right. or something yeah. like that. Yep. a couple mm -hmm. of those yeah. totally did it was such a wild thing like it felt like they went so hard, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like it and but backpedaled so much. It was such a weird dichotomy of like they went so hard on making the launch stuff special, but they had ripped so much out at launch that you're like, where are you right now with this yeah. thing? You know, so. so I got some notable moments. These are the notable moments that I wrote down for the generation. Um, March 31st, 2014, Phil Spencer's named the head of Xbox. So the thing comes out in 2013. It's all the way until March that we get. All right. It's Phil. Here's Phil's show. E3 2014, Xbox drops the Kinect and cuts the price to $399. Like, they, they got to. Like, they're just getting trounced here. 2015, Xbox announces backwards compatibility starting with 100 games, and they announce the Elite Controller. 2015 feels like the start of Phil Spencer's Xbox. I agree. I think he was cleaning up messes for a year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. And uh, plus, and then he came in and said, this is what I really want to do. Here's what I want to do. I want to give people a compelling reason to buy this console who have now snuffed it but have a library of 360 games because they went all in during that generation because the, the PS3 dropped the ball there, kind of big, especially in the beginning. And he wanted those people back. And this is where he started to get those people back, I think. March 1st, 2016, Phil announces the Xbox Play Anywhere announcement. Commitment to cross-buy for all PC and Xbox for all first-party published games. Which was like two things. At the time, this yeah. has become a very big deal. Yeah, this but, is a thing now. Almost, I think people almost take for granted. They forget, like it wasn't that long ago. That wasn't a thing. No, I, this, I, is, this is proto Game Pass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was this was where he start. You start to see his tendrils like sneaking in. Like we're gonna make it a service because that's what mm -hmm. Microsoft does, kids. Mm -hmm. March fourteenth, twenty sixteen. ID at Xbox director Chris Charla announces crossplay for Xbox Live. Do you guys remember that? What a big mm -hmm. deal that was when Rocket League turned it on for like the weekend. Oh. That's Fortnite right. and stuff. And you remember like mm -hmm. PlayStation was like, we can't do that. We got to protect the children. We can't have cross play and all that. <laughs> like, yeah, that was Boy, a this, big deal. That fight has been going on for, that went on for like three and a half four yeah. years. But it was uh, Xbox that was like, we love it. Cross play all the time. Xbox we'll is in a very disadvantaged position. So of this course. was their, this is their goodwill. This mm -hmm. is the beginning mm -hmm. of their goodwill. I disagree with you. <laughs> you know what this is? This is Microsoft. Windows is totally open API. Office is totally open API. All of their products that they push, like all of their foundations, they integrate with everything. I think this is Microsoft's way. Yes, but it wasn't Xbox's way. And they were buried. This is when this is when Microsoft seeped up the Xbox yeah. stuff. It wasn't just their toy project anymore. It yeah, became this is like Phil saying, we can make this happen, but you have to treat it like the rest of your stuff. Yeah, yeah. I really think that he had to champion it. And I think he did. And I, boy, that man has impressed me many times, but... This is one of those things. Later that year at E3, the Xbox One S is officially unveiled for $299, and they announce that something is coming called, quote, Project Scorpio. I remember the GIFs and the little videos that they put out of, like, chipsets. Like, do you yeah. remember like, these yeah. where they were showing? And the Look green at the CPU. And it was, like, 
And I was like, this is the nerdiest crap I've ever seen. I'm here for this. I'm here for it. The Xbox One S is sexy. That is a hot box. It's tiny. We have one. I still have my two terabyte. Oh, it's beautiful. My kids have my S and they have my X like, and they're the same box. This is, this is like not full blown swing, but now I'm back in like right about this time when they got the S I totally got the S. I remember Nathan and I doing a podcast about it. Nathan dubbed it the Xbox one sexy. I'll never forget that. Same thing I say about Leon S. Kennedy. The S stands for sexy. Yeah. Don't, don't leave me an S and don't think I'm going to say I'm, sexy. And I'm back in. They're doing cross play. They're doing, yeah. you know, like they're doing all this stuff. I'm like, yeah, Xbox. Xbox is good. Xbox at February 28th, 2017, Xbox announces Xbox Game Pass. $9.99 a month for 100 games. Xbox One, Xbox 360. I, did, I don't know that I bought in on this right away. I don't, I don't. I don't know that I bought in on on Game Pass right away because I was paying for gold and I was like, I want to see where this goes right. first. They hadn't exactly had a great track record of new things, okay? And I was a little gun shy, <laughs> so I waited. Um, and it was later when they when it started to like snowball. The next and I was one, like, Fine. I got you. Yeah. But yep. no, I I was with you. I remember I was like, well, all these games I already have, you know, I've already owned them for a long time, so I wasn't full day one, but I love what they were doing. I was all yes. about the program. And at oh, this great. point, I'm back in. Nathan and I are talking Xbox. I'm trying to take over podcasts. Like, I'm all in. I want Game Pass. Like, we're going to get Xbox One S. Like, I feel the the resurgence. I'm like, this is the Xbox I know and love. They fix the console. They're fixing the okay. games. We're, we're back on. We're, we're riding the train here. <laughs> Xbox at E3 2017 unveils Project Scorpio as the Xbox One X for $4.99. And they talk about... Teraflops. Teraflops. Six teraflop <laughs> GPU. The strongest console the world has ever seen. I was like, fine. I'm going to buy one because at this it's point. It's a monster. It, it's a beast, but it's a tiny beast. It's a tiny, adorable beast. I did buy this. I bought this. This is what I love here. Xbox for. This is exactly what yeah. I want Xbox. I want to hear number crunching, powerful GPUs and pixels resolutions. I want it. Because yeah. I'm not a PC gamer. I That's my Xbox. That is my PC. That's what I, I want. I wanted it because I think shiny tech toys are cool. Sure. Like, if you're cramming all that into the same box that the S is in, it's the same shell. And they made it cool. Uh, Remember, like, the Xbox, cool. when they announced it, they were like, it's got Connect, and it plays Netflix. You're like, that's not cool. They're Do you remember like, how they revealed it? They they had, like, a shell of the Xbox One And then it, on like, top of it, zapped it apart. Yeah, they, they pulled, pulled it up. up. No, it was under the the empty shell uh-huh. of, of the VCR. Oh no, I'm I sorry. I was thinking of I'm, I'll never forget like that uh, that Iron Man infographic <laughs> when they have it and it like just pulls apart. Yes, you see all the ex- pieces. I love those. Yes, things. I was like, that's Explode cool. Views are like, yeah. hey girl, they're good. <laughs> June twenty third, twenty eighteen. Phil Spencer announces that all Xbox first party and exclusive published games will launch. Day and date into Game Pass. This is when I bought in. Yeah. This is when I started because, and and the back catalog as well. So this is when I said, okay, fine. Fine. Sure. All right. For $10 a month, I'll let's see what you do with this. Um, And they put the freaking codes in everything. They're like, try it. Try it, please. I was so head over heels for this announcement. Um, This is when I was like, now I'm full, I'm full blown Xbox now. Now I'm antagonizing PlayStation <laughs> folks. You, you like know, hard trouble on the internet. I mean, I am just all in. I'm like, this is exactly what I want. Like, this is Xbox. I've got my powerful box. I've got this beautiful service. I've got all my stuff. Like, I'm so ecstatic. This is everything I could possibly want. Um, yeah. I, this is when I'm all in. Game Pass I, brought me back. Yeah. I, I, well, I mean, this has become the Game Pass podcast because of this reason. Uh, but because, like, it's the biggest selling point for an entire, like, collection of consoles at this point. I have legitimately given thought to just signing my damn kids up for it. Like, fine. <laughs> fine. Just fine. You'll have so much stuff to play. You'll never bother me again. I love my children. But it's nice when they're distracted sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so I just, I don't know. The last notable point is E3 2019. Project Scarlet is announced. And that's where we are today. So those are the notable moments from the Xbox One generation. Now, Nathan, I know you got to go. So I wanted to ask you this before we got you to leave. How will you remember the Xbox One generation? I will remember you. Doesn't he have time for a musical <laughs> outro? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the Xbox One, it, it, it was not the best, right, as far as consoles go. But I had a fantastic time with the generation. The games that were on it, the games that I played, the way that I look at consoles is not so much the power of the unit but 
the interface between me and the gaming and the controller on the Xbox was always my defining point. Agree. That's why that's why like I don't really play on PC, right? I don't do mouse and keyboard. If I have a, a controller like a, to plug in, I will. But if if it's like the DualShock Four, like I played some games that were PS exclusive just because I I wanted to. But man, I, I did not like the the DualShock Four. I like the PlayStation uh, Switch or sorry, the Nintendo Switch Pro controller. Me too. Because it's a lot like the Xbox controller, but using that controller really made it a good console for me. And the fact that they iterated it, they gave us the elite late in the life cycle. Um, and they just, once Phil came along, it was a, it was a, a monumental shift in the Xbox I was just about trajectory. To say, it feels like two different consoles. Like if you scrap yes. 2015 and before, and you just judge it from after mm-hmm. 2015, it's a totally different story. You look at what the Xbox one launched at. It was a completely different story because it was more of a, a console by committee, like all the big wigs wanted to have their say in what this console was going to do and what they wanted to have it as. I forgot. That's why you had the, the HDMI input and output and all that stuff too. I forgot to mention I watched that May event when I was doing this. There were people on stage I don't even remember. <laughs> it, it was a, it was a whole. I remember was, I was watching. I was like, "Who the hell is that?" <laughs> don't we watch that? What are you doing? I was like, That's "I literally don't even know who that is." <laughs> it's history. He's got it. He's got to remember. No, you don't. No, we. That's the kind of history that those you who forget the history are destined to repeat it. Uh, I don't think point. it will ever good happen. Point. Again. <laughs> I uh, think, think everyone's been fine. Nathan. If you gotta go, man, I appreciate you jumping in and, and hanging out with the gaming for Guru. Yeah, I appreciate being able to come by and say hi, it's Elaine. First time to talk to you. It's been fantastic. You are a fantastic host, Donnie. You're okay, uh, but Elaine, you're fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, he's uh, my favorite now. I won't tease him as much. <laughs> by the way, I did want to say, you know, this is y'all for Bobby. Bit.ly slash gaming for Guru. If you are listening on the podcast uh, on the audio feed, feel free to go out there and and maybe toss a couple bucks to help him. We are currently at eighteen thousand seven hundred and fifty. Two hundred. That is amazing. Dollars away. Let's go. We're so close. But yeah. That's why I do have to depart. I love you all. I love the the listeners. I love those who are viewing right now. Please have a fantastic episode. And the the Empire has never been stronger with Elaine. That's what's up. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you for hanging out with us. Always a delight. You're such a lovely human being. (laughs) See you guys. Thank (laughs) you. See you, Nate. Elaine, I um I came up with three things that I think the Xbox One generation will be remembered for. So okay. uh, let me, if, if I may, let me go through these and then you hit me with what you Let think. me say one thing before you do. I will sure. say my biggest disappointment is that I never got a controller like my Project Scorpio controller that said Project Scarlet. Yeah, I know. Series X I was saying that game tech one, today, yeah. It is just one big dislike. I just would have loved. I love special stuff. I love special things. I want things. special consoles. I, I want special editions, collector's editions, day one. I, I want it all. I fought hard on the internet for that pre-order, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted a stamp on the stupid controller. I, it. I just did it silly, um, but I wanted one. So that's my disappointment. So I'm going to let you lead this and let's see where this goes, kids. I wrote down three points and the last one really is kind of, a, it, it is a point that is consuming of many points, but I feel like these are pretty good. I'll remember the Xbox One generation for three things. The first one is content acquisition. Okay. Xbox, during the Xbox One generation, realized that they did not have the content. And for folks that are just buying into Xbox today, they may not really be aware, especially if they're kids, of where yeah. Xbox was just long ago. So let me let me take you to 2014, when oh, Xbox God. bought Black Tusk and oh, the geez. rights to Gears of War and named it The Coalition. In 2014, after the Xbox One launched, they didn't even own those things yet. That's crazy because like, and I think I'm going to make an overarching point that we can fit all of probably your points into. This console may be the greatest redemption story. That's a good point. I think that it, that is its legacy, right? It's not, its legacy isn't the connect. Its legacy isn't the three different iterations or all the teraflops. It's a redemption story, both for a piece of hardware and a piece of technology and for like a company's stake in an entire industry. Yeah, yeah, philosophy. If they had not, they, it would have been done. If they had left Matrix there and left it alone. And There'd be no Xbox. There would be no more Xbox. Yeah. And I think that, like, on a plaque on the wall, someone needs to give Phil Spencer greatest redemption in video game history because, like, this could have been the Sega Dreamcast. I'm here for that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, this could have been, like... This could have been a disaster story. We would we wouldn't be sitting here having this conversation. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have my greatest regret about my shiny new console being it didn't say Project Scarlet on the controller. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it, and the the like 
getting the coalition into place, like that whole arc happened because of a redemption arc. Like it's a this is the best freaking movie in the trilogy. Is <laughs> the way that it worked out, you know. So, 2014 Xbox also acquired Mojang. That was huge. Minecraft uh, and probably probably their biggest early acquisition. It in made 2018. Xbox acquired Playground Games, maker of Forza Horizon. Amongst my favorite Xbox in 2018. Owners. The console launched in 2013. They didn't even have Playground. And five years later, they didn't have Playground. Redemption Arc. And it wasn't a slow, a quick one. It was a slow one. 2018, they acquired Undead Labs, Ninja Theory, Compulsion, In Exile, Obsidian, and created the initiative. They're not... Like and they're not done. And now it's Bethesda. Now in 2020 it was Bethesda. Look in at the 2019. Redemption. They acquired Double Fine in World's Edge. That was, that was a big one too. And then in 2020 they acquired Bethesda, which is Bethesda Games, Zenimax Online, Arcane, Machine Games, ID, Tango Softworks. That's almost 12 studios they've acquired in five years. The arc of the Xbox One took us from one of the most stumbling quotable moments in video game history to me, to uh, an arg to us, the biggest arguments that we get to have about Xbox now being, <clears throat> uh, what are we going to play on Game Pass? And oh no, is Bethesda going to make this game exclusive to this console? That's bananas. Yeah, like that's an insane arc of a piece of hardware to me. It's clear that they realize like we don't have enough content to warrant our own ecosystem. So either we do it or we don't. Do or die. And I think game. that is the point you're trying to make. Really, I think um, like in action. The action that they took was, we can either do games or we could not do games. I, but, I really... But to do games, we need content. We need people. We don't have them. We can't rely on third parties. We can't rely on PC. The space is too competitive. We can't compete. We're competing with our arm tied behind our back. Well, so and what did they look at? What did they say? What are we good at? Well, we're Microsoft when it comes down to it. We're good at services and we're good at buying things because that's what Microsoft can do. And they leveraged those two things. They started mm -hmm. buying the things they need to build the service they could sell. This isn't about, like, the end of the arc is Game Pass for them. Yeah. It wasn't about the piece of hardware anymore. Nope. And it took them eight years to get there, though. And Phil Spencer, you know, he's talked about the the, the toxicity of, of console wars and how much he hates it. And he's yeah. walking it. He really yeah. doesn't, like, care. And he's putting Game Pass on anything that will accept it. And, like, you know, he's really... And I think there's a part of me that once... And I was as I was doing this little research project, I was really thinking, there's a part of me that kind of wants him to come out and say, we're going to put all of our games on any piece of anything you want. Because it feels like a Phil Spencer kind of thing to do. That's like, what hey, he if wants. you want to buy them on PlayStation, sure, we'll sell them to you. I, I don't think he... I think, ultimately, if he could strike the right deals, he would totally do that. You would totally yeah. launch game pass app on your playstation yeah. now is sony gonna let you do that no no they're not gonna have it. but that's what he wants yeah because he's looking at it and saying microsoft services company you know what i mean it doesn't matter we want to power your gaming wherever yeah you it are. doesn't matter if you buy the dell pc or mm -hmm. you build your own or you it's still windows that's what they're going for yep do you know what i mean yep and it's to me it's very like they had a sega moment right as this thing was about to launch we either go all in and do it our way and do it different or we cash out and make our games for other people, yep. whatever's left. Yep. And they chose the opposite of what Sega chose when the Dreamcast was not doing what they wanted it to do. And <laughs> if they had made the other choice, we would have probably, probably been playing Gears on a PlayStation and that would have been it, right? Or whatever. Yep. It's wild to me. It's When you look at it in text like this, it's crazy to see that arc. And it it's hits just, home. It's, it's like wild. You forget. Right, because you—it's like parenting. Short memories. You you like put it put away all the hard stuff. Or else Gamers never... are fickle, but we get over it really quick. Yeah, we just oh, it's a uh, stun. Short it's memories. New. It's just like having kids. You put it away, so or else you wouldn't have more kids. It the sucks. second yeah. point that I put down in terms of how will the Xbox One generation be remembered, and this is a down note, but I think it's warranted. I put canceled or troubled games. Yeah. So during this generation, we had, and these are exclusives, Fable Legends canceled. Scalebound canceled. A new Phantom Dust canceled. Oh boy. Crackdown 3 troubled. Yes. They bought exclusive to Tomb Raider, completely backfired. Yeah, that wasn't a good call. The Master Chief Collection, which is amazing, completely it was a mess. mess out of the gate and really hurt them hard. 
it was a nightmare. They should have. And Halo Infinite hasn't had a great run either. To wrap next it in. on the list, Halo Five. Oh yeah, oh boy, that's right. Recore. Yeah. I mean, this is like one of, and this they're still paying for this now. This is the console war part of it, where the collective culture doesn't look at them as they have the games, and uh, you know, fans like us, we we know that they do, but it's these things that stand out, and this is the this is the problem that Phil set out to fix. Agreed. And you see that in that 2014 to 2017 time where they're leaning on Game Pass and they're leaning on backwards compatibility and they're trying to get, you know, they're leaning on indies and they're, they, you know, they've got Inside and they've got Cuphead and they've got Ori. They're trying to find something while they come up for answers for this because they, a lot of these games were right there in that window and it hurt. They were not Sony and they were not Nintendo. Yeah. They lost that head start and they couldn't find it with their own stuff. And they, are, we could argue. I mean, it's not. It's an easy argument to make. They bought it. They've gone out and yeah. No, they, they saw the problem. And they it. fixed it. They saw the problem. They fixed it with money, and that's fine. That's one way to it's solve way to the do problem. It. You buy you buy studios that fit your model, and that are on board, and you move forward. And they they made some smart purchases to fix the problem, but that took time and. The still collection of all of those failures and struggles is is what people remember. It's still taking it's time. They're going to yeah. need several good games. They need Hellblade to hit. They need Avowed to hit. They need Fable to hit. They need several games to hit to get that to be thought of with that prestige again. Yes. You can't carry the the, the hardware. You can't carry the name yeah. on Gears and Forza alone. And it's you not can't. it's not a one game issue. It's not one game. You need no. a selection of games. I agree. Yeah. And Sony and Nintendo have always done better. Yep. And they're, they're just they better at games. Um, the last point that I wrote is how I remember Xbox One and I wrote a new Xbox. Game Pass, backwards compatibility, cross-play, PC. It's a, yep. new, it's a new company. It's a completely yep. different pitch now. And this is the pitch that I'm really excited about. And, you know, Xbox has always been Microsoft. It's always been a PC company. But for 15 years, they didn't really do PC. And I was, you know, they had like, was it Windows Live, Xbox for Windows Live or whatever games? Oh, for Windows Live. It was so bad. Yeah. I, I, a very terrible memory and it was a separate set of achievements so a lot of people would buy the game twice <laughs> and it may seem like a long time but this is a really short turnaround they went from the vcr box with no exclusives no content underpowered to super powerful box very affordable game pass tons of exclusives buying more making more We've got Perfect Dark, we've got Halo Infinite, we've got Fable, we've got Avowed, we've got Hellblade. We have exclusives beyond exclusives to look out for out into the future of the roadmap. They've painted it very clear. The Xbox Series X really is a culmination of everything Phil Spencer had to answer, wrapped up in a bow and just given right back to us. I, it's, uh, it's interesting because going into the Xbox One, before it was announced, before the rumors started dripping out, coming off the 360, I had no concern about what I would play on my next Xbox. And then the announcement happened, and I was suddenly like, what the hell am I going to play on this Xbox? Oh, God, this thing's going to be a trash fire. And then again, we, by the time we got to the One X and the Series X was announced, I was like, I know exactly what I'm going to be playing on this Xbox. And I feel good about that. And I feel good about this piece of hardware that I'm going to get. And it's been su it's such a wild, like, Hill Valley situation for me. Like, it's been very weird. I, like I said, this great, the greatest redemption arc. The greatest My favorite thing about this is... They took me from being an Xbox fan, to be honest with you, being a Nintendo fan that had an Xbox to being an Xbox fan. And like my fandom or my passion for it has never been stronger. Great. I mean, I'm right. Like I'm all for everything they do all, all day. So I'm, yeah. I'm all hook, line and sinker. And that is a testament to, to Phil Spencer. And one of the things I was going to ask you is how much do you think Phil Spencer is the poster child for all this? Like what if Phil Spencer left? That I would, it would be a problem because that would hurt. A, it would, it, here's the thing. He's not only, he hasn't asked to be the messenger. He just speaks with an eloquence that allows it. Do you know what I mean? The way that he talks about this console, the way that he answers questions, his candidness while still pulling back where he has to is impressive. Like I've listened to this man give a lot of interviews and without him, I don't know that they would have been able to sell this vision and this arc because he speaks about it in a, may, a way if you that you watch makes that him... May conference again. <laughs> right. Yeah. And he talks about this thing with like a, with a care and like passion yeah. that few people in this industry have. Most of the time you hear people talking, they sound like freaking robots. It makes you want to root for him. 
I want to shake this guy's hand. Like I want, I would love to meet him just because I love the way he talks about things that he cares about. It's clear he loves this. Yeah. So if they were to lose him, yeah, that would that would give me some worry because it would mean something else was going on. You don't let someone like that walk out the door. Yeah, I agree. You don't. You don't let that. So something would be happening if he left. So those are the three things that I think come to mind for me when I think back on like what will the Xbox One generation be remembered for? You got anything else? I think that's the big one. I think I touched on it. I really do think about that redemption arc a lot. I really do look at the VCR console and think about it and think about, man, we got all the way here and it was, (laughs) I needed a quad and a snow sled to get You know, when I was watching that May conference, you remember the first UI that everybody hates? Yeah. You know, it's really not all that different than the UI we have now. It's actually somewhat very similar. Like just design wise functionality, completely different. It's so slow and clunky, but, and what we have now fast, but style. The organization yeah. of where the menus are, you know, it's left, right instead of up, down, yeah. but having the slightly larger tile accompanied by a couple accent tiles with the background, like stylistically from like a web design, it's it very, very similar. Because it's very web 2.0. Well, it's, we it's really Windows wanna, 8. Yeah. If we really want to get kind of like, it is, it's the start menu, even yeah, in 10. Sometimes. It's the start it's, menu. It's, it's definitely got that, like, uh, it's got that almost you want to reach out and click it interface. And that was kind of a forward thinking thing too. And I think it was troubling in 2013 for a lot of people. Um, and it fits better now. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it didn't fit then. And I think that was the one thing that felt a little ahead. Well, and I think okay. you mean, obviously they designed it for connect. So well, that's yes. why the tiles right. are bigger and more space. So you can swipe. Um, but I think what they definitely learned or what was proven was that we don't care about, we really don't care about the UI. And honestly, <laughs> like I care about it a lot. I say I care about it a lot, but here's the thing I've used, 15 UIs all to differing degrees. I like them, but the one thing that's what's the constant, it's not the look and it's not the placement, the constant, the speed and the feel it's got to perform like performance matters in UI, not so much style. I want to know where the things I want are without having to think about it twice. That's the biggest thing for me. And I want to get there quickly. That's the second. Do you remember snapping that? Hey, Xbox snap that. I remember it. It was weird. I actually kind of love that because you could do that with a video call. You could picture in picture. You could picture. You could picture. watch something I, and play something. If I had that, it didn't now, work that all that great. Oh, it was terrible. But uh, the idea was great. Right. If it, it like, pulled it off, it was useful. But I remember a lot of things freezing and crashing. And oh, I remember true. the Twitch app that you would pull up and you try to stream, and it would like kind of free. I remember it not being very good. I remember trying to snap skype calls because that was what i used to connect for besides turning the box on was actually it was great for that's what they wanted you that's what microsoft was thinking uh because i had friends all over the country and it was just the cheapest way to talk to my friends at the time you still had to pay for minutes on your cell phone oh god i'm ancient um but like (laughs) right oh no i only have 250 text messages this month call me tomorrow and it turns over but i that was it was a very forward-thinking like web 2.0 type of interface design but really for me like the reason I like the current interface so much and the reason I didn't hate the original one is like, I know where everything is without looking at my controller to figure out what the hell the button is that I need to hit. And yeah. it goes, I can go there quick. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's one more thing that got brought up in, in chat by Sean and it's, it's, it's important. Like the design lab. I'm yawning. Sorry. It's been a long day. Uh, I hate saying elite- that. Sean, Sean, I got to look at the chat. Let me go open the chat. The design yeah. lab, the elite controllers and the adaptive controller initiative. Oh yeah. All happened over the course of this generation. Do you know what? When the adaptive controller came out, I like bashed it. I I think it's one of the most important things that they did. I agree, but I bashed it for completely different reasons, but I have to own it. I, yeah, you should. when it came out, I was monster. super pissed. <laughs> Because it came out like right before E3. And I remember going, this is what they're going to talk about at E3. Instead of delivering us the games, instead of delivering things, they're going to come out and they're going to talk about Adaptive Controller. Which which I'm like, I am totally for, but this is not what their problem is. Like, they need games. They need to fix this. They need to do this. Like, what, what are they doing? That was my issue with it. And I, I almost, I almost I feel bad for it. Like, now I'm ashamed. And regretful, but that's where I was. I was being selfish. That's heated gamer moment. Uh, yeah. I think that the adaptive controller is actually probably... A, like, it's incredible. For me, it's one of their most important design arcs. Like, Seeing I think it in that's use. Amazing. And how you can plug in so many different remotes and how it can be used so many different uh, ways. It is incredible. It also is one of the most thoughtful pieces of design for people who cannot play your games in traditional ways that I've ever seen a company put together. 
I've never been more impressed with a piece of technology. I feel like in my soul, I feel happy every time I see an ad or like a, a picture of that thing. I'm like, people who never got to play games get to play it because of that. It blows my mind. And that all came out of this uh, this generation also. See, redemption arc. It was like their mission statement is like to empower every person through technology or something. And that's, I what watched, that can, that's a symbol of that. I very infrequently like tear up at like dumb video game ads or like marketing stuff. Yeah. The video that they put together for this particular controller that was on the site made me tear up because seeing people who don't get to experience something that I love so much can't. The guy that hooked I, it up so his daughter could play Breath of the Wild. It, I just, it made my whole heart like yeah. want it. Like I, I, I teared up. I'm not even, I'm not going to apologize. Like yeah. that thing is important. I'm glad that Sean brought that up. Yeah. And I, I would say even like consumer first now that I see it, all access. Yeah. All, yes. Like they yeah. really, when they came to the Xbox, it's like they sat there. Honestly, you could even, I could even envision it. They put a picture of the original Xbox one up and they go, what was wrong with it? And they go, it was underpowered. It cost too much money. It had these bells and whistles. It didn't focus on gaming. It was unattainable. Like it didn't have games. And literally one by one by one, they go, yep. our new box will not be this. It will not be this. It will not be this. Will not. They had an answer for everything. And the answer too was, we're going to have to work through it. It's it's gonna suck because this isn't this is not stuff that they solved in fifteen minutes no. in, in a month. This is stuff they took six years to solve. They, they turned that shit for a while. You got to sit there, plant yourself in a seat, and say, "I'm willing to ride the wave on this to get where I think we need to go." And I really do think that they did. And it takes some grit, man, because it so wasn't take fun. Billions of dollars. It's gonna take a lot of it hard a lot work. Of money. It's gonna people are gonna not like it. You're gonna have to take that. a lot of crap from people on the chin. Our customers are not gonna like it and but it took took commitment, took vision. It, it, there's a lot of, to be said for Phil and his team and Microsoft as a whole to just hunker down and eat it for years to get where they are now. Yeah, like especially coming off of a 360 that was so successful. Like they had, to, we were on top. Now we got to eat it. I had all my notes. Um, that generation, 360, Wii, PlayStation Three, most successful video game generation of all time. Got to be right. I, Probably. I mean, you uh, you had PlayStation Three that sold, and I'm I don't have numbers. I'm going off the top of my head, 115, 120, you know, or right million units. Mm -hmm. Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty is like roughly 100, 90. Yeah. And Wii, the Wii, hundred. DS, one hundred and fifty three. PSP, I wonder, like over a hundred. If you kind of crazy, that was a gaming was, was huge a, in terms of selling units of hardware. And they, boy, did they, they missed the boat. And like. I'm like they, <laughs> Every other generation that you look at besides that generation, there's a have and there's a have not. Mm -hmm. There's somebody that sells it all and then there's somebody who sells some. And then that generation hits and they all hit. And that's that's attributed to it was a long generation. But still, they all hit. They all found success in that generation. That was attributed to it was a long generation and video games started to become mainstream. Video games started to become the thing. They were the nerdy thing. They were not the cool kid thing. That's true. For a very, very long time. Yeah. And then suddenly Nintendo hit with something that everybody wanted in their living room. And the conversation changed. And media and how we consume media started to change. Yeah, just even imagine like the E3s from like 2005 when it's like a briefing room with like 50 people right. in the room to, to 2012 where it's a stage show with The Rock. And, you know, <laughs> it's like, make more money than movies. Yeah, I think people need the perspective like that's why this is starting to happen like it's happening because partially because you know but the the industry well, popular is popular culture it, it is and and yeah. people have changed and how they in, in you know take in media changed yeah so. and it's really yeah really really successful and you're right to come out of there and it really feels like the Xbox one was like it doesn't matter it doesn't matter how strong it is it doesn't matter the cost we sold However, yes. tens of millions of these, and they're going to buy the next thing. And look at Connect. Remember, Connect when it launched was successful. Yes. And they were chasing but, a paper tiger. They were chasing a fad. It felt like they were holding a really great balloon, and they let go. That's what going from the 360 to the Xbox One when it first launched felt like. They just they did it to themselves. They didn't have to let go of that like amazing balloon that the 360 had blown up for them, but they did. And it was such a bummer. It was so sad to see. And then they had to roll back all the way up this hill to get where they are. And, and right really now they're, I don't even know if they're back, but no, right, now they, the right now they just have a chance to get back. They're still pushing. But like right now they just kind of have an opportunity yeah. to win people over again. 
they're that they're one hundred percent still inflating balloons with their own. And if Halo balloons. misses, that's going to be a huge blow because people are going to be like same old Xbox. I think if Halo misses, it could be, but I think they can follow it right behind with the right exclusive from Bethesda, and they might be okay. Yeah, they might. Yeah, they be need able to make it happen. They yes, need a couple. They, they need a couple do. wins. Like, like yes. I do feel like they're just a. It's not that far. It's not out of reach. If they can get two or three wins in a row, agree, okay. they'll be right there. They'll yeah, be they're, right they're there like, with people's minds again. They want to crest over that mountain. Yeah, they're they're trying so hard. They're like right there. They're running on. They're running on low. They need to eat a freaking power bar, figure out those wins, and get over there. Yeah, they're, if they they're can close. just get a couple really good games out, yeah. people will be right well, back on. I agree. And I think they – I I have faith that I think that they will, and I think the Game Pass will help them pull like pull the anchor up, you know, too. So – but they're just – they're not out of the freaking tomb they dug themselves in 2014, 2013. Checking in over at uh, Gaming for Guru, Bitly – bit.ly dot com slash gaming for guru capital G's capital F eighteen thousand seven hundred fifty dollars we're still there guys we're two hundred and fifty dollars away I don't know there's nothing else that I can do to I guess to ask you to donate but look, if there's any this two hundred and fifty dollars look we we are streaming until midnight we have twenty two oh yeah, minutes left twenty two minutes but also you can do, if you're listening to this after the fact you can still donate and do because yeah, it's yeah good, you can you know I just I, I want I selfishly want to see it before we close. That would just be the perfect way to end the stream. If I could do it oh, myself, I would. I'm not good enough for you. I've sold my 3DS <laughs> plates. Like, That's you know I've raised the money. We've move, donated man. our Patreon funds. Like I I have done everything I can do. Hell of a move, man. But I'm really I would love to nothing more to see us reach that goal. If if you can go out there, even if you can't, if you could retweet it, if you could retweet share it. share the link, let people know. Use the hashtag. Let them know. We're $250 away. That's it. Donnie's all in here. He's it's been an original we. He's been doing this all day. God, that was... Boy. You know? Donnie, so, what were your favorite Xbox One games? That's a great question. Because it, I've you been know, thinking about this one since I read these notes. <laughs> contrary to popular belief, there are some excellent games on Xbox yeah, One. I think so. And on the One. By far, I think the best published Xbox game of the last 10 years is Ori in the World of the Wisp. I knew that this was going to be your answer. Yeah. Everybody and I don't disagree. That's why I get it out it of is, the way. Is it, <laughs> both Ori games are exceptional video games. Yep. And a good call from Microsoft, instead of trying to Kamiko again and make their own to put a absolutely gorgeous, heartfelt, delightful platformer on their box. too. I mean, I'm, I'm going to get to more, and I definitely want to hear yours too, but it just dawned on me that we didn't talk about 900p. Oh, God. That that's was such right. a thing. Resolution drama. That, that was happened. a big deal. When it came out, everybody was like, power matters, 1080p versus 900p. And like now, we still get okay. it from, from, from Digital Foundry, but it's not, it's not the same. Because it, the TVs are upresing everything anyway. Because we mm, have to grow as a people. Think? Okay. This. I think. We're at the point at this point that it, we, we're in diminishing returns territory here. We're talking about what human eyes can process. And you're right. 1080p was a big jump from where we were. Yes. It's, this 4K stuff is not as big of a jump as... Yeah, because we had that, HD, but yeah. it was like 720p. It wasn't, it was H, it wasn't HD. Or you know. it was 1080 interlaced for a yeah, while. Like that too. full 1080. You remember yes. like those first initial games we saw and we were like, Rise, Son of Rome looked awesome. <laughs> I like I feel like and I spent a lot of time in college. I was a signals processing person in college. There's a lot of conversations about what human eyes can actually process and how much resolution we can actually take in and how much worse it gets as we get older. <laughs> um, and there is a, a point of diminishing returns. Uh, I'm not necessarily saying the jump to 4K is like a completely diminished return, but that arc is slowing and flattening. And that's why this is going to become less and less of a conversation. This is going to become more about what can you do with the frames now, you know? Yeah. And how smooth can you make it and how not buggy can what you make it? What AI can you make? What? How can you make that's, the world feel alive? Yes. That type of stuff. As soon as you start to plateau on sound processing how human ears hear sound and how human eyes see visuals like you're at a point now where you're going to have to now you're going to have to solve the hard problems ai is a hard problem to solve mm -hmm. so and making it feel uh real like people it's a hard problem to solve but i do remember oh god the arguments over what the ps3 could output uh, the ps4 could output versus the xbox one. Oh god that mattered to me 
Did it matter to That's you? That's a big reason why I jumped because I was like, it wasn't so much, it wasn't because I was the person that was like, Rise looks great. And they're like, it's only 900p. I'm like, still looks amazing. But yeah. I'm that Nintendo player. It's not right. necessarily just the number. I'm not about the stat, right? right? I'm, I'm all about the game. The game looks great. It looks great. But it, to me, it was the value. Why am I paying $100 more for a box that does less? Because that hurts me so much more than like anything else that they can do. That was probably they're putting the connect in the box and forcing it was the biggest mistake to make that to, to and having that big jump in price. It was such a big mistake. It was a huge mistake. Um, I will say to me that that jump in resolution sometimes did not matter as much as which controller I was holding. It, it, the physical connection to the interface is a bigger deal for me personally. I can't abide that. I floated that. between controls. I think I've talked about this a lot. Like, I have a preference. I prefer the offset stick, but I don't care. It doesn't bother me. I would never choose to play something because of that. I, I have, I find the the DualShock Four uncomfortable just for the, like the way my hands are and like how long my fingers are, and I hate that slip off the triggers on the back of that controller so much. Like it bothers me. I would pop them by accident because my finger would slide. You know. Sure. So for me, like that was a big deal. I want to hold that controller. If the game runs well enough to, and the resolution difference isn't enough for me to notice, I would prefer to hold that controller. So, well, um, All right, what else we got for video games? Favorite okay. video games. Gears 4 I love. And yes, I love it more than Gears 5 for just campaign and story and narrative reasons. Not, not because of performance, not because of the epic and amazing performance and optimization that Gears 5 has because it, it deserves respect for that. I feel like too many people gloss over how great gears five is it is 4k 60 it's beautiful flawlessly it's beautiful <laughs> you know I, like it is incredible i agree with you i think the open world in gears five did it a disservice when we because see cyberpunk and i'm just not throwing not beating cyberpunk it's just the first game came to mind but when we see all of these games that that resolution dips and it does 30 and it doesn't do this and it's like gears five is doing everything it's you know it beautiful yeah. and it's impressive and it's still impressive even on new hardware it's more impressive on it's new it's a hardware. showcase that like you can have it all Absolutely. you can have resolution and performance and it can be beautiful and it's like why didn't every game do this <laughs> but the problem i agree with you that i like gears 4 better because i think gears 4 was tighter the problem that i have with 5 is that those that open space like the open worldy type sections were empty and yeah, i don't i, I just didn't want to okay. interact with it i wanted to be through it as quick as i could yeah, yeah. i can or, understand that Four has an exceptional campaign. For the just the whole new the new arrival, the new gears, the like and I know like the DB suck and all that, and I agree with I don't like that either, but the transition that it goes from what I thought of gears to what gears is at the end of gears four, I was so on board. And I thought they made they pulled that off so well. So much better than I remember reviews talking about. Yeah. I remember yep. a lot of reviews being like, it's Gears. And I'm like, this isn't Gears at all. <laughs> this is a totally new Gears. Like, it's completely different. Like, you know, it's not Meathead. Like, the story has weight. It's invested into all this lore. It's retroactive, but in the best way. Like, not in a cheap way. They didn't change what you knew. It was like this whole other side story, but it all fits into everything that you knew. Like, the writing was very well done. It was, like, wise. Mm -hmm for the was, story that they were telling with and, Kate and, and her, her mom. And, and I was like, this is, I'm, I was, they relaunched gears and I was, I was all, I was all in again. Yeah. I was very, it's funny. Cause gears had four had to win me over. Yeah. No. And that's what I'm saying. Like I was hesitant. I wasn't on board when they first announced bad. it. I didn't like judgment. I, and, and that was what was that, that prequel type that was in between. And I was like, I think I'm done. I, I loved the way gears three ended. And I was like, this is, I'm done. I'm fine. This was, and then judgment came out. I'm like, see, this is why I was fine. So when I came into four, I was ready to not want to play it. And, and, and I had like the, the girl protagonist and it was like doing like, in, in, I've said it a lot. I think that's a tropey thing of this generation. And I don't think it's cheap. I think it's warranted if anything else, but it is a trend. It's a trendy not, thing that we've done this generation. I would not use the word trope or trend. I would use the word equality, man. Oh, no, no. 
freaking male protagonist for so many years that yeah we're catching up like okay. i said it was warranted it needed to happen yeah but you can't not say that like everything did it it felt like everything was doing it right i think everything finally just said yeah maybe we should try yeah. something oh, of course different. and they all did it at the same time and i get how you feel about it but i think oh. it was maybe and necessary. i don't i don't i and i was never against it sure right? i'm trying I see to where you're i'm trying to walk the line saying. i'm just pointing it yeah. out there were a lot of things when you first saw that trailer if you played gears one two and three you were like Nope. What are they doing to Gears? Yeah. This isn't sure. Gears, right? And then when it came out and they're like, it's Gears, you're going to shoot stuff. And then like, you get into it in the story and it's like, this is a whole new universe of Gears. This yes. is a whole new thing. And I think, yes. For me to be that invested after one game with the history that I have with the franchise, I think is a huge success. And yeah. I loved it. And Gears 5 didn't do nearly as much in that regard, which is what I will always, always hold Gears to because Gears to me is a campaign. I've told you. It's, it's uncharted yeah. it's campaign game i agree i agree so i'm ex- stoked for six i can't wait to see where they where we go but gears four is the linchpin without right. it this is the same conversation i have about a lot of trilogies that second game is a carryover yeah it's meant to bridge you it's a bridge game that's and that's okay and, and five is a great bridge game it's oh, a great it's game a great game but for for a game to win me back by the end of it like i came into gears 4 like i'm gonna play the gears game because i played all the other gears games but i think i'm done and then by the end of it be like now i need to know where the thing that i remember most from gears 4 is the moonlight yes and so many of those game and so many of those levels you have the moonlight you have the moonlight in the village you have the moonlight in marcus's house you have the moonlight over his mom's grave the moonlight when you're on that like is it like a motorcycle and you're like running and you have the helicopters and stuff like yeah like there are so many moments like that in Gears. Gears 4, you know what? Here's what I'll say. Gears 4 had touching, sentimental moments. And I never had that in Gears. Like, very rarely. It was just a lot of, like, you know, it's unless somebody stuff. was dying. Right? Gross stuff. But it's not yeah. even, they're not even dying. Like, these are just good moments. Oh, the tomatoes. I will never yeah. forget the tomatoes. My freaking tomatoes. That was one of my fates. One of my favorite lines. I say that every time I cut tomatoes and they're not good now. And my husband's like, really? And I'm like, I can't stop. I, I, I just, I really, I really, really loved Gears 4. It's a great game. That's I, a top um, one for me. I will see your gears and raise you Forza Horizon 3. Yeah. Because I think that might be my favorite Xbox One game, hands down. Not 4. 4 is great. 3. 3 is better. Forza Horizon 3 is boy might be one of my favorite racing games were you always a forza player no i bought motorsport i tried to play gran turismo i bought the games because i love cars right um but i couldn't they were so clinical that's the word i would use for both forza motorsport they were, and gran turismo that's why i never got into it i don't know what the oh, hell a spoiler does and the brakes and the density i'm like Ooh. and the, the interface would walk you through it but you really so had to time walk, for man. this mess i don't it, and you could auto too it just wasn't but horizon the Some Horizon of the auto tunes I can't even understand. <laughs> here's here's the deal. Her, the, one of my favorite Xbox 360 games was Test Drive Unlimited. Test Drive Unlimited lets you get in a car and cruise around Hawaii and chill and just chill. And if you wanted to take missions as you went, you took them. And if you didn't, you didn't. And Test Drive Two wasn't great. Unlimited Two. And I wanted that experience again. And Forza Horizon Three gave me back that I'm just going to drive in my car and chill, and maybe I'll do a race when I feel like it. I'm going to go explore the roads. I'm going to go find stuff. It's special. Yeah. Very, very special. My story so. with this is um, I'm the opposite of you. Never really play racing games. Fair enough. Played Midnight Club. I remember that one. A burnout. Those games Not are fun. really. Didn't even really get into really? Burnout. Yeah. That's I never really did racing games. Um, Nathan. This is like, I, what year did three come out? That's a hard question for me to answer because time is a flat circle. You keep talking. Okay. Um, <laughs> I had my Xbox and Nathan was like, you've got to get this game. And I was like, dude, I don't do cars. And he's like, it's the best game. I'm like, that's impossible. And I just never did. He's like, Donnie, you've got to get it. And my thing is I never, like, I don't like racing, right? It's just one of those things. I just don't race. If it's not Mario Kart, I ain't racing. And I only like, so that was about to say, that sounds about right. It's about the right time. And Nathan goes, just, just try. And and here's the thing. The review cycle came out for, and it's getting like near perfect review scores. Because it was. People and are like 9.8, 10 out of 10. I'm like, this is ridiculous. Their best game is a car game. The yes. same game that they bring out on stage and they put the Ferrari out there. This can't be the case. And then I start, I get it. I, I cave to, to hype as I do, eat the hype. I cave to hype. I get the game and I start playing. And I'm playing with Coach Mo. And he starts telling me about the game. And he's like, he's racing and stuff. And I'm like, I don't. He's like, you don't have to do this. 
No, you and just drive like, around. He's like, do you see that board? He's like, you could just hit those. And then he starts telling me like about the map and stuff. He's like, there's ramps. And then he goes, there are secret cars that you can find. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, like secret cars you can get and you can get more cars and you can like outfit those cars. And he sets me off into this world and I never came back. I play this game religiously for weeks. I I liked the Horizon series before this one, right? But there was something about this, this was, one. And this was the first one I ever played was Forza this was Horizon the right one. 3. And there is, and 4 is a great video game. I want to be very clear. But 4 is, was not special like this one is special. And there, I don't know what it was about it. I, the combination of the setting, the track list in this thing for people who love like electronic music is amazing. Yeah, it, that was another it, thing. I love, me. Like, like I'm an electronic Pulse music radio. Person. Freaking I love it. it turn it up i am a huge edm fan i have been i have it all i have the forza playlist in my youtube music player there are a couple of tracks from that playlist that i was already spitting in headphones on playlists and i was nice. like oh they know me it's like they know me this it took all the good stuff from burnout that i wanted it took the test drive experience of just cruising through streets and then it layered over top this festival like rave vibe and i was yeah. like what well, they made a video game just for me they made it for me it's the funniest thing that i still don't think i like racing games Horizon no, is like- the only one that I play. <laughs> yeah. I think it's the best racing game I've ever played. And here's and the my- thing. I don't race in it. That's what I tell yeah. people. I'm like, I don't race. Me and Jack have played Forza Horizon 3 and 4 for like 50 hours. We, Our map is littered with races. I wish I could hide them. <laughs> it's not I- what we do. We don't play that game. <laughs> I love I love the showcase events. And I yes. love how much stupider they've gotten. Yes. <laughs> I'm racing. The tra- Lego stuff. The oh, Hot like, Wheels stuff. The Hot Wheels stuff. Oh, oh it was I, so good. So I remember my husband coming down when I was playing. I don't remember if it was three or four. They kind of run together a little, but I was racing against a plane. Like yeah. straight up racing yeah. a plane. And he goes, what are you racing? There's no other cars. I'm jet. like, a plane. And he goes, what jet? And I was like, and he flies over and he goes, this is the stupidest video game. You and do I'm, the train. He The train. And he sits, he slowly just sits down next to me. And he's like, this video game is very stupid, but he's like there. It feels great. And I think it's like that rewind mechanic makes me feel, it feels approachable to me. Like, I don't feel like I'm suck at it. Like I do in Turismo. And I suck at Turismo. I'm like, I can't play this. I'm not any good. And that, that mechanic was in motorsport as well. And I think it's one of the smartest things that racing games have done. Like it, it sucks to race for like six hours and botch it. Like it, give me one chance. And, And people do a lot of that. Like, it's just this was like just right. It's it had the same exact feeling that I had playing Test Drive Unlimited, where I would just drive through these streets just to discover all the streets for like hours. And it's probably my favorite Xbox One game. I don't think it can be unseated. It's perfect. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I do think it's perfect. I would give it a ten out of ten, and uh, yep. I absolutely loved it. And like I said, we don't we don't race. We collect all the cars. <laughs> we break all the boards. We do all the jumps. We do all the drifts. There's I so much that. to do in that game that isn't racing. That it's astonishing to people if they don't know any better. Like they'd never know because it's a racing game. That's all you ever see them do. And it's like, there's so much more to do. And and Horizon 4 is still excellent. And all that stuff is still there. Yeah. It, like I said, for me, that this was just the one that was special. Um, really, really special. because it Rand hit- predicted that they're going to bring Hot Wheels uh, for Horizon 4. Isn't the Lego stuff in 4? Yeah. Okay. I like the Lego That's stuff the- more than Hot Wheels stuff, personally. I like them both for different reasons. They are different. They're very different. They're very different. I like Lego I like... World. That was really cool. Like um, little town and everything. You I love smash that. all the think... bricks. But the Hot Wheels stuff is so silly. It's like, ooh. Oh, it's nuts. You're going up you know and down, it's, upside it's, down and stuff. It's so much fun. Like, I, I it just kind of doesn't get better for me than, like, that a car racing game that brings racing people who or people who hate racing um, out. I think we hit $19,000 on our donations. No way. I think you should check. Oh, we did! Oh my gosh! With five minutes to go! Woo! Leon Chin with $250 six minutes ago. Oh my god. If you're listening to this after the fact, you can still donate. I just, Please still a, donate. You can still win our Xbox Series S. I was going to bring the box down and put it up, and I completely forgot. This is a very warm moment. It's I been a really long day for me. Recorded. He's been, he, so I just came in here for two hours on a Sunday, all fresh and, and beautiful. Donnie's been at this all damn day um, and has been organizing and helping plan from the PSVG side for like weeks. My, so like, my Donnie app at work moment. crashed or county crashed. I've been jumping on conference calls in between streams. I've been doing texts and emails while we're streaming um, yeah. on Shack. A stream, the stream failed. It's been a like just one of those days. He, and he needed, I could, he needed to have this moment. 
it needed to be recorded so Donnie could have his oh shit moment. Wow. And so if you're listening to this after the fact, Thank I realize so it's much. not a moment. There it is. Man. We did a good thing. Let's go. You guys are making me cry. <laughs> oh, don't cry. I don't know what to do with crying men. <laughs> I only know what to do with crying women. Jesus. Cry. No, it is like kind of a relief. Like it just... I know, like I said, I told you earlier, and I know it's dumb, but it's just how I think of things. Like, I really, you know, like, you don't want to be the, you don't want to, like, not be the team that shows sure. up, you know? Sure. Like, but everybody was doing so good, and, it, like, it kind of made me, you know, scared. It's just like, I want to be, I want to, I want to show up for, for Bobby and, and Sean, and I want to, you know, be there like the Nintendo dads Truth. and everybody else, and, man. The, look, like... You don't sit here and do podcasts because we want to make a million dollars. We sit here and do podcasts because of moments like this where we can give back to people in a community who sit here with us, right? Like we did this as a group and we did all, all yeah. of us did a part yeah. of this. And we did this because we, we love the people and we love doing this. We didn't do this because we make some sort of money. We, we love this and we love the people who are in this sphere. So I'm really glad to be here for that. Like I, I'm gonna cry. I don't want to cry on the camera. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, I, I that's so me. Often. I'm just. It's been a long day. It's been a oh, you know, dude. and I, it's been a long week for me. I, I'm. I told this earlier. I. Uh, we're doing the vaccines and stuff at work, and I don't mean to turn this into like a therapy session, but like, it's almost like, uh, coincidental or fortuitous that we had to delay the podcast because if we, if we didn't have the podcast today on Sunday, I don't think I would have made them earlier this week. Like you, that's you, been that week for me. It's been go, go, go. Like I'm gonna be working all day tomorrow. It's a holiday. Like that's just where right. we are right now. And today was the day. And like I actually had to trade two shifts next week to be here today because we were activated downtown today. And my boss was like, "I need you there." I was like, "I can't. I've been doing this all month long. I've been preparing for yeah. this. Like you can't take me off of this." And like I just wanted to do a good job. You know, like Sean. Yeah, Sean was asleep, and a big part of you know me like was just trying to like be Sean when Sean wasn't here. So I was trying to make sure we were hosting everybody and make sure we were tweeting everybody and tweeting Joe after work and treating quests for pixels and, you know, shouting out people that were donating and like trying to keep it going, like build some hype. Well, you know, we Sean's did, so we good that. at that. We did that. We did that as a whole sphere of communities for all these different podcasts. And we all bicker about nonsense. Right. And we all start <laughs> crap with each other all the time. And for one moment, you know, we, channeled our collective stubbornness into the right damn thing and we i think some good in the world right. yeah look at that don't let it clear heads <laughs> we'll screw it up <laughs> in a week i'm sure i'll say something stupid but today was a, a this makes my heart happy i'm glad that we could do this and i'm glad to be a part of this and i'm gonna get all teary-eyed oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm. this is this is great that's your good vibes that's your good vibes mm -hmm. i'm so glad someone clipped that thank you did they really yeah, uh, oh, your no. reaction. Becca cl clipped your reaction. It was good. Um, yeah. Thanks. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I haven't even go. looked at Twitter yet or anything like that. Well, just... we can deal with that. Let's close. Let's wrap up our in our retrospective on this this beautiful Xbox One generation and close this thing out because you've got to be exhausted. And I'm tired. You know, I feel bad saying that I am because Sean went 24 hours. Like that's we we pale in what cons what considering what Sean did. But you know, I am I'm tired. Only two hours and i'm tired so you all are heroes i'm tired it's been a long day <laughs> yeah um do you have any other games from the xbox one generation that you think deserve special mention before we get you out know of yeah i do I and mean, there's some amazing games we didn't talk about third party games and stuff like that and you know but it's weird because like i wouldn't call them like i i don't think hellblade's synonymous with xbox one no like, i agree that's it was exclusive I, that's, to ps4 for a year this right? is where i struggled with a lot of that because yeah. like when i here and think about i think about games of a generation but i think about games i just played on the xbox one like yeah the Assassin's i think of things that are stuff. synonymous with the box like i think right. inside cuphead oh, yeah. Hell yeah. yep um My, i mean minecraft in a lot of ways by the end of the console yeah generation, yeah become like a fixture in my home and it's an xbox game now it, it, whether or not you want to think of it that way minecraft like dungeons i forza and gears for me are hallmark video games they're the ones that you forza gears and ori really yeah. really paid dividends for xbox this generation where they didn't have halo and they lost a lot of projects i'm trying to look at some lists to see if there's something that i'm forgetting like so there's got to be like a big glowing glaring sure. game 
that I'm that we're forgetting. I think, and a lot of people will use this moment as like, see, Microsoft has no games, and like, oh God, Sea of Thieves. It's not a game for me, but no, but it was a big deal. It's a huge game. It was a hu- and millions and millions. It kicked off Game Pass. Yeah. You remember that? It, it was the first that. game. Oh crap! It was. They were like, it, we're doing day and date games, beginning <sighs> with Sea of Thieves. Everybody gets it. That's right. I had forgotten. I blocked that's that. huge. But it's not a me game either. That was huge. So I blocked that one out too. That was big. Um, for me, it's not. It's a cornerstone moment, and it's an important game, but it isn't one of my favorite games. Like, it yeah, would never, I'm the same. It it's never not be. for me either. But the Ori, Forza, and Gears trifecta is like defining of a generation for me. Yeah. Of Xbox specifically, not Halo, not those three games. You know, Far Cry Five is for me on xbox because of just how great it was on on xbox one x and how okay. crazy xbox one x was they launched this new console with all the power and with no games yeah. i i they just remember said, hey, there's like here's a new it. box and it plays all your games yeah. better and i remember um you i don't know if you if you feel the same when i got my xbox one x i started buying a bunch of old games because they started enhancing yes. them i did that so too. i was like buying mafia 3 which i never wanted to play but I bought it for six dollars because they were like it's in four K sixty frames a second, I, and I was like, I, I want to see that, and I started playing I, stuff. I traded PS4 games over and decided the version I wanted to take forward was the version that was probably going to work on my next console. I was, uh, you know, hedging my bets. But I think Assassin's Creed Odyssey was one of those games for me that I played so many. I held that controller for so many hours, and The Witcher Three. I replayed The Witcher Three. I think. Because I had played it on PC on console with the Xbox version, I believe. I've played that game a lot of times, though. That almost doesn't count at this point in my life. <laughs> uh, I did Doom on Xbox. Um, I absolutely did Battlefield Doom on Five. A Titanfall feels very uh, Xbox. Ti- what did Titanfall Two come out on other consoles? Yes, I had th- to. It did, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, Titan- it was exclu- the first one was exclusive. That's right. It wasn't yeah. the second one. Titanfall 2's campaign is one of my favorite shooter campaigns of all time. Yeah. Um, I played it on Xbox, but it, it's a def- generation defining campaign for me, actually, weirdly enough. It was, it's, yeah. hard, it's hard to have a conversation at this point in video games about like games specific to consoles when they aren't Nintendo and Sony. And I realize that that's a lot of fuel to the fire for a lot of people, but it's just the way, the way that it is. Oh, you know what it's, I mean? it's only that way for a short time because there's about to be a lot more games. Yeah, I think that Microsoft is still, and we've discussed it to death. They're still fixing that problem, but and, but they me, are fixing it. They are fixing it. Yep. And by by the One X, I was not buying anything multi console for PlayStation. No, yeah, no, I'm the same. I was playing when I got the One X. I was playing everything on One X, all of my games. By the time I got Game Pass, it really sapped up. I've said this a bunch. Game Pass is incredible because, and I think this is um, Damon Baker. Is that a guy? That's a guy, right? Damon that Baker. Name sounds familiar. Look, he you're used to run the indie program for Nintendo. Yes. He okay. now runs indie. He works at ID at Xbox, and I don't think it's a coincidence. I'm not. I'm, I'm not trying to give him all the credit. I'm sure there's lots of people that are doing it, but it's astonishing how Nintendo highlights these indie games that they want to be on Switch that always hit Game Pass. Yes. And that cannot well, be a coincidence. No, it's absolutely not. And it's like <laughs> a big portion of my money spent on Switch has been siphoned off. Yes. To Game Pass, because it's like, yeah, I'm going to play all these indies on Xbox now. And Xbox I, has become my like indie machine, where I, Switch and yeah. Wii U was my indie machine forever. I so often play it on Game Pass, and if I really fall in love with it, like CrossCode is a really good example. I'll I buy, it buy on a Switch. Switch physical copy to have the box. <laughs> I do the same, same thing. I'm, like, I'm a monster. I'm a nightmare human being. My husband's like, you can Spoilers play for, this, uh, for when we get back on schedule this week. Uh, I beat Scott Pilgrim, because I love that game. And you bought it on Xbox. Stuff. Bought the collector's edition on Switch. I do this all the time. Like I play a lot of indies on Xbox because they're free. I'm yeah. they, I get them with Game Pass, and then I go and buy a physical copy on Switch from Limited Run. I yeah. get this with like Blasphemous is a really good example. I don't know that that one's on Game Pass, but it's like I do this constantly. I do I'm a nightmare. Thing. I'm a monster, and I love it. And that's <laughs> and I've said it before, but that's a big for me. I play a lot of indie games, or at least I think I yeah. do. I think I, I do, and. It's a big part of my like daily playing. It's a big part of my month yeah. to month between big AAA releases. I'm doing a lot of indie games. Uh, same, 100%. So Game Pass, honestly, just for that. If they, yes. if they took out the day and date titles, Game Pass is worth it for me. 
just because of indie games. I'm making a I, killing off of their indie offering. I get to play stuff that I might scroll past in Steam or wait for a sale pretty quick and at release. And then I and I fall I was in love with super a super hot games. mind control delete today. So That's good. a $30 purchase. It's so good. That too. I'm just playing. But I do this with tons of indie stuff like that I would never stuff that I would look at and be like, I don't know. And then I'm like, well, it's it's free. It's, it's there. I'm just going to try it. Yeah. They've changed my buying behavior that the games will be announced and I'll go, yeah. I'll wait for that to hit Game Pass. I'll wait for that to go to Game Pass. I do the thing, which I never used to do with video games. I do the Netflix thing. I don't know what to do next. So I go to the Game Pass thing and scroll through and I look for a pretty picture that I want to play. And the craziest it's... thing that they're doing now is they keep getting all these games that are exclusive to other platforms. And then yeah. when they finally come to Xbox a year later, they're in Game Pass, oh, absolutely. like Dragon Quest, like Yakuza. Yeah. That's crazy. And here's Dragon the thing, Quest though. I'm just playing them on Xbox then. It's, it's, yes. I was thinking about, I was actually thinking about this exact thing. They've taken a weakness. So like last generation, right? We were talking about last generation. Last generation, if you sold the most consoles, you had a leg up in getting exclusives. Yes. You could go 100%. to these people and go like, we have more people to play. Xbox has taken... They've, they've turned a weakness into a strength. They're like, well, yeah, PlayStation has more users, but we have 20 million active players that yeah. buy DLC this Game Pass thing, and we've got numbers to prove it. When you put your yeah. game in Game Pass, it sells more PlayStation copies, and we've got I've numbers read, to prove it. It's I've like this. Read, it's the craziest thing. It's a weakness. <laughs> They're like, we yeah, we don't need to sell 100 million consoles to make this worth to you because we have these 20 million people that love to play games. And if you put your game over here and we put it in Game Pass, you're going to make more money. People will play. and Because they cut great deals with those And it doesn't make too. any sense. It like, does, it, it, to the gamer, yeah. like to the people, how many, it's been years now, and how many people are like, how are they making money off of Game Pass? And it's because Game Pass is a marketing tool. It yeah. makes so much noise because you get these hardcore, devout gamers that play the game. They start talking about the game. They start sharing game. Um, HyperDot is my, my example. HyperDot's in Game Pass. It's a little indie game that I yeah. adore. It is right. amazing. I will buy the game on any platform that it comes out to you because I love the game that much. And it's because of Game Pass. And if you buy it and get it and play it in Game Pass, like you'll see it. And it's because I'm talking about it on my podcast and other people are talking about their podcast. Other people start sharing it. Like it gets that snowball. It, and it becomes, like I said, it becomes the Netflix effect. I don't know what to play. I don't want to deal with any of these trips, starting any of these AAA games. I'm going to scroll through the Game Pass catalog. Yeah, it's Just a curated like scroll- thing. And I scroll through my Netflix like, it's, suggested for you, and I scroll through Game Pass you the said same suggested way. For you. I was going to say, because I just recently watched the last Blockbuster documentary, which is a really good little watch. It is good. And they had the little shelf that was like the staff picks. It gets weird. <laughs> That's what Game Pass is. It's like It is. This is my exact point. Do you know how much what? I would love if Game Pass had a little tab that was like Phil's Corner? Oh my god. <laughs> Tell me what Phil Spencer is playing. That's not creepy, is it? No. Yeah, it's a little creepy. It's fine. But I would love to know what Phil... I would love to have curated by Phil Spencer, you know, or like uh, like Steam does this. They curate lists from certain people. Yeah. It, they but those are like way. genre tags. Yeah, Whereas yeah. Game Pass is yeah. like, here's... I think there's 500 games of Game Pass by now. It's a lot. It's you remember ridiculous. they were like 100. We'll do 100. Do. Just 100. And it was like, I remember like at one point they added a few games and it was like... There are 109 games. Well, we all... Something's got to be leaving soon. Right. We all thought they were going to cycle games out to stop the hunt. It would always be 100. And they're just like, how about... uh, We'll just keep... Just keep adding more. Their service has become like the I don't know what to play scroll. And it's it's the Netflix flip of suggested for you. And it's like one of my favorite things to do when I just don't know what to play. And sometimes I don't stick with that game. But I don't feel bad about not sticking with that game. Because I didn't buy a $60 game. I paid for Game Pass. I didn't like it. We move on to the next thing. And yep. It's fine. It actually has made me. And don't like you more... love when you don't feel bad about quitting a game because you didn't do it or you don't it's... have. I had the guilt. I had a hard time yeah. with that. I paid you did. for it. I, should... I, I want to finish what I start. $60. Oh, there was a just... night out. There was a day at the movies. There was a dinner with the family. That's not, an, was... inex... That's not an insignificant amount no. of money. I used to do this with books and movies too. And what I've discovered is like. Game Pass is really more of an enabler of me doing the thing I should be doing, which is play the things you love to play. Play the things you want to play. Stick with the games that make you happy. And Game, Pla- Game Pass makes me that makes that easy. It's easy. It's easy. So this was... I just, we were supposed to else? stop at midnight. Oh, we can stop anytime we want. We're not going to do questions this week. Here's what we're going to do. We're $19,200. <laughs> 
Donnie's gonna blow. Donnie's actually gonna blow a gasket, and he needs to sleep. We so can do twenty. Gonna do. <laughs> we're gonna do questions next week, yeah, along with yeah. what we're playing, because both of us are tired. Donnie looks like he might actually burst into physical flames right now, <laughs> and also because this show has actually gone on long for us. Yeah. The chatty, the chatty. Oh, now that's infectious too. Crying and yawning. Yeah, and you know, one of the fun things about this show um, is I didn't hit record before we started streaming, so I will have to pull the video down and cut the Empire part out of it, and then edit from there. It'll be a fun day you know tomorrow. What? I love you for all you do. Really, you get a lot of credit because you. I don't have to. That would stress me out. <laughs> you're just like whatever. I'll I did it earlier out. today. Like Shaq and Game Tech was the same way. They're already out. I got them out. You see, so. you're a hero. That's why. I think this is. Is did this wrap up our retrospective? Did this yeah, I tie this, up? I think this is a really. I'm really proud of this episode. This is a great episode. Yeah. I had fun. Mm -hmm. Before we sign off, let me give a shout out to our Patreon producers because I haven't forgotten about you guys. It's just that I need to put my reading glasses on because this text size is too small. There we go. Uh, shout out to all the folks who are supporting us at the uh, producer level on Patreon. Michael Masick, Barry Cathcart, Edwin Callow, Nick Creature, Rude Days 93, Ben Moxham, Rob Emanuel, Nick Fallhaber, Paul Calicote, Kyle Heyman, Chris M, Devin Tyus, Josh Bourbon, and Grouchy Surge. And just like, thank you to everybody for listening to the show, for retweeting the tweets, for donating if you did, for blasting it out there if you couldn't donate. Like, just, you guys are, you make the dream work, man. Everybody who listens to the show and supports it makes the dream work. We're yeah. here for you. And because of you. I think that's going to do it, man. It's going to do it. 12, 13 in the morning. We did it. We'll be back to our normal schedule starting this coming Wednesday. You can't get rid of us. We're still here. <laughs> so until later this week, play some video games in the meantime, y'all. Peace, folks. Bye.